The following program is an exclusive presentation of Prime Sports. At BYU, they pass the football, probably better than anyone in the nation. And senior quarterback Steve Sarkeesian is thrown for 10 touchdowns, including six against 12th-ranked Texas A&M. For the Huskies, it's their home opener, trying to erase the sting of a three-point loss at Arizona State's. It's the home opener for the Washington Huskies, and they welcome in the 16th ranked and rather explosive, I might add, Brigham Young Cougars. Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Waltz along with Sonny Six Killer. Let's see. BYU scored 99 points in their two games. Washington scored 42 last week. If it lives up to its billing, this should be some ball game. Well, I hope everybody brought some seat belts for their seats here today because it's going to be lit up, I believe. It's uh, last week, I believe the over and under was 58 and a half, and they blew that away. So uh, <laughs> anything can happen today. And anything usually does happen with BYU offensively. Steve Sarkeesian is just, I guess, at the end of the line of a long legacy of quarterbacks. You go back to, to Steve Young, Jim McMahon, Gifford Nielsen. He's the latest. He's the latest guy in Provo. Well, he is, and he's 6'2", and he's a big kid. He's a senior, Rich, and uh, he's been leading these uh, Cougars all season. Got three interceptions, ten touchdowns. That's not too bad. Quarterback situation at Washington. We saw Brock Heward last week in relief look brilliant. Shane Fortney gets the start against BYU. I wouldn't be surprised if the Washington coaches give Fortney a little more of the playbook like they did Heward late in that ball game. Well, I think they have to. Shane Fortney is too good an athlete. He's a big kid. He's fast. He has a strong arm, Rich. They just need to give him some plays to let him shine a little bit and let the offense get, get some confidence in him. Defensively, when you attack BYU, I think the pressure goes on the linebackers. Sure, your DB's got to cover, but everybody goes out for patterns at BYU. John Fiala had a big week last week. He's going to have to have another one this week. Absolutely. I think uh, Ink Aliaga got overshadowed a little bit by John Fiala, but John Fiala works harder than anybody on that defensive squad. He improved his 40 times so much, and the thing is, you need that to cover the pass routes, particularly from BYU. I get the sense, Sonny, that the Washington players and coaches are very anxious to get the home season started. Started. After the loss at Arizona State to Jake Plummer, they look forward to playing here today. Absolutely. Anytime you have a home team, uh, you know, advantage, and you know, this crowd is ready for a game today. And I think the Huskies are really going to open it up a little bit and score some points. Well, we're ready. We hope you are. Should be an interesting one. BYU and Washington. It is next on Prime Sports. Well, Good. welcome the Huskies and the Cougars. Husky Stadium a sellout, and certainly that's not a surprise as Washington opens its 1996 home schedule. And Jim Lambright bringing the dogs onto the field. For this Washington team, a chance to, I guess, erase some of the sting, Sonny, of the 45-42 loss at Arizona State. A lot of good things happened down in the desert, and there were some things that obviously the Huskies would like to correct. Well, you know, with the youth on the squad, we can see where teams early on could take advantage of you. However, the Huskies have to feel good. I know riding back on the plane with them, there was a sense that they really accomplished something and gained something with that ball game. There's your weather, 58 degrees, a little bit of a breeze, a chance of showers. Certainly your typical Saturday afternoon here at Husky Stadium. This series tied at a game apiece. The last time these two teams met in Seattle, the Huskies won at 52 to 21. BYU won the previous year. And get used to this series because for the next four years now, these two teams will be meeting. They'll be in Provo next year, back in Seattle. And then the fourth and final year of this series, uh, they'll be back in Provo. There's Jim Lambright in his fourth season. He has not faced BYU as a head coach. And he talked about getting his offense off to a very quick start. You need to do it. BYU, you know, is going to come out and start quickly on offense. The Huskies, I think, as we talked in the pregame, really need to let Shane Fortney open it up just a little bit and let him shine. Let him be an athlete. Let him run the ball if he has to. Earlier this week, Lambright talked about uh, getting his team ready as we're ready for the kickoff. Washington and BYU. 
Yeah. Ethan Ponchman, who was a local kid out of Mercer Island, will kick off. Corey Dillon and Joe Jarzenka are back to receive. And the wind is already a factor. Although a gentle breeze at 10 miles an hour, it seems to be swirling a bit on the field. It does, Rich. Having played here, you can look at the flag, it's not moving. But down on the field, it will swirl in off the lake and just kind of go around in a half circle, and uh, it will knock the ball off the tee. Hotchman with the kick and the Huskies will get to return one they didn't get to do it much at Arizona State Corey Dillon out to the 16 yard line loose football and BYU and Washington both after it it looks like Washington has it and so the Huskies with a deep sigh of relief Jim Lambright talked about getting his offense back to a quick start Husky ball. Well, the, the big thing is to learn from mistakes that we made in the Arizona State game and then project forward with an improved game plan, understanding what your quarterback and your full offensive complement have as strengths and try to really lock into those. First and 10 Washington, their own 16 yard line. Shane Fortney at quarterback looking downfield, and it's incomplete at the 25 yard line. No flags down. Gerald Harris the intended receiver and it's second down at 10. He had a lot of time to throw the football although he looked like he forced it in there a little bit with the coverage real tight coverage by the BYU defender. Shane Fortney the junior making his second start last week eight of 17. He did have a touchdown pass a 36 yarder to Cam Cleveland. Second down and 10. Rashad Cheehy the lone setback. On a quick hop, Hathorn trying to get outside, and he's knocked out of bounds by Chris McTire. McTire, part of a, a BYU defense that does not receive a lot of publicity, obviously, because of the offense that the Cougars have. Speaking of offense, Washington's offense with Fortney the starter, he's got Sheehy along with the Janoski and Payton to throw to Cleveland, a very good tight end as well. Mike Reed getting the start at fullback, and obviously you'll see Sheehy in there as well. Lynn Johnson getting the start in place of Tony Coates up front. Third down short, Sheehy cuts inside, and he has the first down at the 28-yard line. Eddie Sampson made the stop, and it's first and 10 Washington. There's a little, little glimpse of Rashawn Sheehy we did not see much of last week in the desert, Rich, cutting the ball, running upfield, following his blocker, and, and hitting the hole with authority, which he didn't do last week. Ball out to the 28-yard line. Now, Sheehy just 48 yards on 17 carries last week. He's in motion. And Fortney will go to him. Sheehy gets outside. And he's brought down near midfield. They will say he stepped out of bounds at the 41 yard line though. So they'll bring it back about eight yards. Eddie Sampson made the stop for BYU. There's a small example of what coach Scott Linehan the offensive coordinator has been trying to do last week is spread the defense out get the receivers out and trip set which they did. And all Shane has to do is find a guy that's not covered which was Rashawn Sheehy. Fred Coleman probably will not see time today with that sprained ankle. So Janowski, Harris, Jerome Payton, and Andre Desisher should see time. This is Sheehy looking to throw the football, and he's out of bounds. Gerald Harris was downfield. Spencer Reed ran Sheehy out of bounds. Remember, it was Sheehy last year that threw for a touchdown pass, and the Huskies had ideas. Harris was well covered, and Sheehy did a nice job to eat the football. So I'm working on that in practice this week. It looks like Rashawn Sheehy really didn't try and sell the run too strong. And sometimes the receiver has to sell the block on the run. And I'm not quite sure if Gerald Harris really sold the blocking uh, to allow himself to break away from the defender. Corey Dillon and Rashawn Sheehy in the backfield. First time we've seen that combination. And Dillon, the lone remainder. Quick pop, Cleveland with a nice sliding catch, 
right at midfield. He'll be short of the first down. The junior out of Cedro Woolley, who made two catches last week at Arizona State. He seemed to disappear in the second half down at versus ASU, but I tell you, Shane Fortney, if that ball would have been on the money, would have been a big gain. As you see on this play, tight end Cleveland breaking clear at the screen right there. He just tried to be too fine. Sometimes when the receiver is so open, Rich, you tend to just kind of aim the ball like much like a baseball player. One of the larger tight ends you will see at 265. 6'4. Now on the defensive side, BYU, their, their middle linebacker, Muirbrook, is only six feet tall. Spencer Reed, 6'1. They don't really have a lot of height on that defensive side. Two tight ends set with Cam Kissel in. On third down and short, this is Sheehy bending it outside. Now inside, steps loose, and he's down to the 42 yard line. Very close to breaking it. Shea Muirbrook, the linebacker that you talked about, made the stop. Shea Muirbrook will be in on a lot of tackles today. You get, you know, you're going to say his name a ton. He's their leading tackler and uh, real leader in that defensive squad. Here's a look on the right hand side. Good blocking. There's Cam Kissel, the H back kicking inside there. And allowing great move right here by Rashawn Sheehy. And that's one thing about Sheehy. His strength is so much better than last year. And of course, he has that great speed. First down and 10, ball in BYU territory. Opening drive of this football game. Kissel in motion. Sheehy again. This time, penetration. Henry Bloomfield first there to get him. And it's a loss of maybe two. There's a look at Bloomfield out of Taylorsville, Utah, the senior. This is a defensive line, Sonny, that does not have a sack this year. As we look at their defensive line, the BYU Cougars come in with Ed Keel, Bloomfield, IU, and Yancey up front. A linebacking crew that's anchored by Muirbrook in the middle, Reed and Martin on the outside. Omar the Blanket Morgan at one corner, <laughs> Tim McTire, Ellison, and Sampson in the backfield. Fortney on a quarterback draw, going to keep it. Breaks loose to the 30. He's down to the 25-yard line. Chris Ellison made the stop. That is one of the things that Shane Fortney brings to the party, Sonny. Well, absolutely right. Last week, we had Brock Heward doing the quarterback draw. You can see the way it's set up here. Much like you're going to do a draw with a running back, except the quarterback keeps the ball. And look at the strength right there. Picking it up. He loves to run the football, Rich, and there is a real good sign of it right there. Fortney for a big kid has excellent wheels at 6'3, 225. Mike Reed is in motion. Fortney with time. Has Reed at the 20. And he's down to the 15 yard line. It's a nice pickup of about 10. The blanket was there to stop him, Omar Morgan. Well, Mike Reed was really quiet last week. He really wasn't involved in the offense of the Huskies, but I tell you what. So far in this game, Shane Fortney has gone to a multiple receivers, and it's a good way to spread that defensive out, defense out, which will allow him to run those quarterback draws. Second down and less than a yard. Just outside the 15. A little over 11 minutes left in this first half. Movement up front. Lynn Johnson at left tackle. Time to address that, I guess, Sonny. Tony Coates at his left tackle spot. And you can see Johnson pointing to himself, the senior out of Des Moines, at 6'3", 290. That's not an easy move to make because Johnson is normally a center. He has the broken thumb. They put him at guard, and now he finds himself at tackle. A little like uh, the Seahawks Ed Cunningham last week going into the ball game cold, but Lynn Johnson will come around. I think he was, uh, he's a good athlete. He's been around the program long enough. He knows what the offensive line needs to do. Yeah, and it should help play again uh, right next to a senior and Bob Sapp over on that left side. Second and short turns into second down and about six. Sheehy, big hole. He's inside the 10. First down, Washington. And the real fear for BYU is that Washington would run it right at him. Well, that's a play that Coach Lambright, there's a good look at it. He loves that kind of play. And it's not really smash mouth, but I tell you what, you got Cam Kissel, number 11, and they're leading the way. You see him right there, second from the bottom on the right-hand side there in the screen. Good job. Excellent blocking up front, Benji Olsen and Olin Kruitz. Olsen and Mustafa Sobi over on that right side with Kruitz the center today. 
First and goal, Sheehy. Inside the five, and he's down he's to the four yard line. Second down and goal. A little hesitant there, right? I, I thought that Rashawn had a chance to get to the corner. He felt he didn't. The guy might have had the angle on him. Here's a good look. The right side of the screen. Right in there, he busted up. From that angle, that's a good move. From up here, it looked like he might have had a chance at the corner because that didn't show you how far he, the distance he had to get it. She has been the feature back on this opening drive. Second and goal inside the five. Sheehy again. Sheehy in for the touchdown. Washington takes the football 84 yards on their opening drive. And impressively, Rashad Sheehy finishes it off. Well, you look at this, Rich. This time, very similar play. He decides to beat it to the corner, and he is so much stronger than that DB that uh, carries it into the end zone. Very good job on this opening drive, Rashad Sheehy. Good to see him back from last week. John Wales with the extra point. It is good. We have a timeout. Washington, impressively, up 7-0. Here's another look at that touchdown by Rashawn Sheehy. It all starts right there at the end of the line of scrimmage, number 85. You got Cam Cleland sealing off the inside, getting the middle linebacker. And right there, Gerald Harris with a nice block, getting in the way there. But Rashawn Sheehy's power and strength and speed uh, got him in the end zone. There's your scoring drive, 84 yards on 13 plays and an impressive five minutes and seven seconds. A lot of little plays added up to a big drive. Sure did. Looked like the offensive line came out to prove a point so far in that opening drive. Dominated the line of scrimmage. Key blocking by everyone up front. And that always helps the running back, as you know. Last week, I thought that Rashawn really didn't have a lot of holes to choose from. Today, it looks like the line's doing it. Randy Jones will kick off. The Huskies would like to get a little bit deeper on their kickoffs, and thus Jones will do the chores this afternoon. BYU is very good on the special teams, especially returning kickoffs and punts. And this is James Dye, who was the Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year on special teams last year, and he's out to the 28-yard line. And that's where BYU will put it in play. There he is, Steve Sarkeesian. He's a senior. You know, he originally started at USC as a baseball player, but he left after one season, went to junior college to play football, and uh, Brigham Young is happy he did because he has been nothing but special this year. His second real full year as a starter in this program. Kayla Louie in motion. That's KO, Kayla Louie. And Sarkeesian to the air. Going to go deep, and he overthrows Kayla Louie. It's incomplete. Offensively for the Brigham Young Cougars, they have a lot of weapons, and they've used them this year. Sarkeesian will throw to. He, he'll throw to just about everybody. He has completed <laughs> passes to 11 different receivers uh, this year. Kaipo McGuire, along with Kayla Louie, the wide receivers. Chad Lewis, one tight end, and Etula Mealy, the other tight end. Last year, they caught almost 70 balls between them, and an offensive line that is very good, Sonny, and I think very underrated. You spend so much time on Sarkeesian and his receivers, but you got to remember the offensive line gives him a chance to throw the football. He has time here. He's a good scrambler. Sarkeesian to the sideline, and out of bounds he goes with a flag at the 38 yard line. And BYU will pick up a first down and pushing and shoving on the sideline. Whoa, Jermaine Smith coming over, delivering a big hit. Quarterback clearly was heading out of bounds, and all you got to do is tap him to get him out. That's a little youth there, Rich. Smith, one of the two redshirt freshmen. Again, Two passing plays by BYU, and we've had pressure back there on him. He got dinged on that first pass play there were to get him, but he escaped again, much like Jake Plummer last week. On the defense, 15, first down. 
It's a 15 yard penalty add that to the Sarkeesian scramble and it's a pickup of almost 25 yards. So Sarkeesian and the Cougars are into Washington territory at the 47. Incomplete looking for his tight end Chad Lewis. Good play action performer Sarkeesian did an excellent job of fooling the defense but the key to that play and the reason he's playing that position number 40 Jerry Jensen for the Huskies back to deflect, deflect the ball. If you see this on the right hand side of the screen Rich excellent play action in the middle. Tight end coming across right there. Jerry Jensen. No he didn't. It was just a poor throw. I had initially thought Jerry Jensen got a hand on it but Sarkeesian just lost a handle. And that's a good illustration of the pressure that is put on this Washington defense. When you play BYU yeah your corners and safeties have to cover but your linebackers have to cover as well. Sarkeesian on second and ten. Still looking got a man wide open. James Dye and he overthrows him down at the 22 yard line. James Dye was wide open and Sarkeesian too strong with the throw and Washington very fortunate you give Sarkeesian 10 seconds to run around and that's real trouble. Well look at this play we have a four man rush pushing up field here. David Ritchie Mac Iaea, Jason Chorak on the top. A lot of time to throw you can see throw the ball on the run. Unfortunately he's been a little high on two of them. Mel Miller a little late with the coverage. Die started that pattern on the left side of the field and ended up over on the far right side. <laughs> yes, he did. Third down and ten. Lots of noise for Sarkeesian. Movement flags. John Fiala, or excuse me, David Ritchie came across. Dead ball. All sides on the defense. It'll bring up third down and five. You can see that David Ritchie was a little mad at himself. There's the defense. The defense up front, Campbell. Ritchie on the outside. Chorak, Aliaga, Fiala, and Jensen, really the strength of the defense. The freshmen's on the corner, Miller and Smith, Parrish and Roberts, both juniors at the safety spot. On third down and five, let's see what BYU does. Sarkeesian again with time, swings it out of the backfield. A two EA and he's out at the 32 yard line. Mel Miller made the stop. A two Aya made the catch. Mark A two Aya. They they spread it around, Rich. I tell you, you look downfield, you see the big tight end in the middle. That's usually where he likes to settle down and get a possession. But a two Aya. Good job. I didn't know you could still hurdle like that in the college game. Sure. I don't know why you'd want to do it. <laughs> he did it. That was pretty impressive. It's a first down for BYU. Blitz coming. Cougars pick it up. Down to the 31 yard line. Ryan McKenzie, the ball carrier. He picks up three. Second down at about seven. Sarkeesian with the blitz. Dumps it off. McKenzie the catch. Still on his feet. And he's run out of bounds by Tony Parrish. But he's right at the first down marker and he may just have another BYU first down. Sonny this is a very impressive drive by the Cougars. Well it's helped by the big penalty of 15 yards certainly to get him on the Husky side of the field but excellent job. I tell you these guys are so well schooled. It looked to me like Dustin Johnson 32 picking up the blitzing safety that time. And again Sarkeesian out there hitting the open man. David Ritchie not being able to make the tackle. First and ten at the 22 McKenzie off the right side and he runs into Jensen. Ryan 
No gain, second and ten. Ink Aliaga. Not real uh, noticeable last week, but need a big game out of him today, getting back in pass coverage. Sarkeesian, the senior, 6'2", 210. Very mobile, very nifty. In trouble, and he goes down. Jason Chorak on the blitz. And it's sack number one for the Huskies today. Watch the bottom of the screen there. You see the big tight end, Chad Lewis, 96, going downfield. Jason Chorak, again, last week, pick, picking up where he left off. Jerry Jensen also had a big game last week. The key to that play, to me, was Chad Lewis going down the middle on the play action pass. Usually on a play action pass like that, Rich, you normally look for a tight end coming under the route. And Ink Aliaga was all over him. Third down, 16. Shotgun for Sarkeesian. Whistle stops the play. I don't know if the Cougars got it off in time, and I think Sarkeesian is upset at the sideline. Many people, Sonny, when it's a delay call, immediately blame the quarterback or the, the guys on the field. Dead ball. Delay the game on the offense. Five yards. But many times it's the inability of the sideline to get the play in, but you can run it. I believe the Husky fans know that from last season. <laughs> the Huskies had a ton of those. Third down at 22. Sarkeesian on the move again. Around the corner he goes. And he'll dart out of bounds at the 28-yard line. David Ritchie was in hot pursuit. If nothing else, Steve Sarkeesian is going to be tired Jose. Uh, he is on the run today. Good pressure by the Husky defense. And there's John Fiala again getting the shove out. But I tell you, the down four people for the Huskies are really applying pressure. And BYU now will attempt to kick a field goal. Here's a look. Great push. See how the push, Mike Tuiaia pushing the big guard, James Johnson, backwards, allowing everybody else to play on the outside. Mercer Island's Ethan Potchman will kick a 46 yarder. Did not get there. And so the Washington defense holds. Washington 7 BYU nothing we'll take a timeout after this word from Pepsi. Rich Walton Sunny six killer back seven nothing Washington on top of BYU. The Cougars drive stalled just inside the 30 and that's where Washington takes over after Ethan Potchman missed a 45 yard field goal. First time they touched it, Shane Fortney and Washington went 84 yards. Sheehy. Out to the 33 yard line, Eddie Sampson ran him down. Sonny, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Sheehy has a big day today. And I think one of the reasons why, AstroTurf. He's a step quicker on the turf, and the Brigham Young Cougars may not see a team this quick on turf all year long. Well BYU does not play well on turf. They play well on the grass. So uh, that should favor the Huskies today I would think. Sheehy a gain of four. Mike Reed right in front of him. Fortney with a lot of time. Cross the middle. Got his man. Dave Janoski. A 
nice touch by the big quarterback out of Muckle Teal. Great protection in there by everyone. And Dave Janoski just going across the middle. Jerome Payton had cleared out the safety. Uh, Eddie Sampson, number 36, as well as the corner. Eddie Sampson, the local kid. Sampson out of Tacoma went to Lakes High School. Wearing number 36 for Brigham Young. Sheehy with a flag down, bends it outside, and he goes down to the 47 yard line. And we'll wait and see what the flags are all about. Offside Brigham Young. You can see Corey Dillon just entering the huddle. Very exciting runner. So a, a new look that we've seen already, Sonny, with, with both Dillon and Sheehy in the football game at the same time. And Sheehy on his way to the bottom of your screen lining up as a wide receiver. Checking off there. First and five. Fortney to the sideline. Sheehy cutting in. Incomplete. Chris Ellison out on the coverage. And it will bring up second down and five. Well, you know, Shane Fortney appeared to me like he checked the he spreads them out, then makes the call on what route he wants run. And I tell you, it's really tough to hear down there in Husky Stadium. And uh, it looked like that time he didn't hear it at all. Well covered by the Cougars. Though. go downfield well actually it was Jerome Payton that had the clear block the lineman was just looking for somebody to hit but Jerome Payton 24 for the Huskies key block to allow Rashawn to get in the end zone well there's a little glimpse of that speed Rashawn possesses John Wales trying to add the extra point and he does 155 yards on two offensive series. And Washington is off to a fast start against BYU. It's 14 0. 14 0 Washington on top of BYU. 425 left in the first quarter. An interesting week for the Seattle Mariners. The Texas Rangers in town. The Mariners have picked up a couple games. And Texas trying to win their first American League West title Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday every game of the Rangers series is right here on Prime Sports and remember a half an hour before first pitch Mariners warm up Washington apparently is warmed up 71 yards on this drive on uh, just four plays an 84 yarder and a 71 yard drive. Off the missed field goal by BYU. James Dye and Ronnie Jenkins back. Jones again to kick off. Randy Jones. Needs to get a little more distance on his kicks. Uh, the last one was a little bit short. This is Dye at his goal line. He's an excellent return man and he's upended with a flag down at the 25 yard line. 
James Dye last year had a couple of punt returns for touchdowns. And a hold against BYU. I don't think we get a chance here to see the hold. I believe it was on the left hand side. Brendan Jones was clapping his hands quite loudly, number 13 for the Huskies. Normally, Rich, you tell, you know, in this situation, you're down 14. Do you junk your game plan, maybe not run the ball as much? <laughs> well, BYU just does a regular offense. That's right. Although, you know what? You talk about BYU in, in the passing game, but it, it's a possession passing game. Mm -hmm. They're very good at moving the football down the field through the air. Sarkeesian, first man through, a Tuaya, second down. Mark Atuaya, the ball carrier, game of five. Second and five. Seven straight to the Pac-10. Their last win, Washington State, back in 1990. But they did beat the number 12 team in the nation, Texas A&M, three weeks ago. On second and five, this is McKenzie, and down he goes. Brian McKenzie. That's one thing that will happen to the teams that come in. They're not used to the artificial turf. You try and make a real sharp cut, and you really got to tone it down and come under control to make those kind of cuts. In the old days, Rich, we used to call it the USC slide. You know, they'd always come to town, never used to this side of the field, which is in the shade a little bit. It's going to be a little damper down that end. Third down and six, Sarkeesian roaming around again. Incomplete for McKenzie. Jermaine Smith on the coverage. All right. And the Washington defense with a very good stand. BYU forced to kick. Everybody in coverage that time. Pressure again, Jerry Jensen up the middle. Excellent call by the officials. Jermaine Smith was there, but didn't look like he had contact. Alan Boardman ready to punt. Jerome Payton. And it's Payton at his 45. Down to the BYU 45 yard line. That's where Washington puts it in play. For their third possession, their first two have been impressive drives for touchdowns. After last week, it's kind of surprising. You, you might see Dave Janoski back catching the punts, but Jerome Payton as well, a very talented young man, very nifty on his feet and uh, great speed. Here's a chance to bring in Brock. And he's in, Brock Heward, into the football game. As he did down in Tempe against Arizona State. Sheehy in motion. Dylan, the lone remaining back. Heward, very impressive in relief last week. Dumps it off. This is Corey Dillon to the sideline. He's out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Chris Ellison met him right at the first down marker. Chris Ellison will remember that blow. Uh, <laughs> Corey Dillon, you know, 220 pounds running full speed. Excellent job by the coaching staff to get Brock Heward into the sink of things. Nice little deal. They kind of flooded the deal. They had Rashawn Sheehy as a, as a wide out on the near side. And he threw to the obvious guy, Corey Dillon. Last week, Washington down 21 points. Heward entered the ball game. And in almost a four minute span, Washington was even. And I think a lot of that had to do with the play selection. He's upended by Tim McTire. 
tough reception. Brock had a little mustard on that one, a little bit behind him. It's a tough catch when you got to go up in the air and go behind you to come up with the grab. It seemed like Sonny, when Hewitt came into the ball game last week, down 21 points, Washington felt they had to throw the ball down the field and do it in a hurry, and they did with some success. And I think the coaches saw that. And in this football game, they, I think they've decided to maybe be a little more creative from the get-go with Shane Fortney, and it has shown with two touchdowns on the board. Sheehy, right up the middle, should have it. Very close to the first down. Think he does have it. Dennis Simmons, one of the BYU linebackers, made the stop. First down, Washington. Husky offensive line, Rich, has been doing a great job here so far in the first quarter. Haven't had much pressure on the quarterback when they throw the ball and we run the ball. The Huskies have done a great job getting downfield, almost 100 yards. There's your score, final moments, first quarter. Mike Reed in the backfield with Sheehy. Sheehy again. Trying to pick his way through the white jerseys. Chris Ellison, along with Spencer Reed, made the stop. Gain of five. Sheehy with a 45 and a four yard Spencer touchdown Reed. run. Good blocking. Mike Reed, 36 for the Huskies, leading the way out there. Cam Kissel, the H back. Not too bad of guys to ride on down there for four or five yards. There's your total yardage, Washington. Dominating this football game. And there's a minute and a half left in the first quarter. Brock Heward, his first drive. So far, so good. Of course, when you hand the ball to Sheehy, good things usually happen, and he's down to the 25. I'm sure that BYU with Brock Heward in there, it looks like Brock's having a hard time getting loosened up down there, but it just up here in the booth, it just looks like he's ready to throw deep on any play. There are your numbers from last week. Heward very impressive. He and Gerald Harris really hooked up. 67 yard touchdown pass. Hathen had a 55 yarder, not for a touchdown, but it set up a score. For the first down, it looks like it was. Down to the 23 yard line. The clock continues to roll, and the sticks continue to move. What was impressive about the first drive, Sonny 13 plays in over five minutes. Sheehy in motion. Corey Dillon right behind Heward. Brock going back with time to the corner, and he overthrows Jeremy Brigham, his tight end. Well, he put it right where you needed to. Great catch or a great throw, but uh, don't let the under defender on a short pass make the interception. You can see it here on the right side, 84, Jeremy Brigham. Jason Wacker, number two, out there on coverage, along with Spencer Reed. See, nobody's going to pick that one off. Second down and 10. Sheehy trying to get to the outside. Flag goes down, as does Sheehy. Nice job coming up from his corner spot by Tim McTire. That will not make Lavelle Edwards happy. It sounds like offsides against Brigham Young. You often wonder how a defender can be offsides. You got all day to sit there and you know where the ball is. But you know, they get a Lansing. On the defense, five yards from the previous spot, repeat second down. Rich, it looks like uh, Rashawn Sheehy 
not used to running the ball as often as he has today has gone out. Corey Dillon will be in there at tailback. Well, they've used Sheehy and Dillon at the same time. Rashawn was so limited during two days. There's Lavelle Edwards. Boy, how long has he been there, Rich? 25 years. 17 WAC championships. Second down and five. Here comes the blitz. There goes Heward. It's a Brock Heward sandwich. <laughs> Byron Frisch along with Shea Muirbrook. And Washington will be faced with third down and about eight when we get to the second quarter because the first one is history. Washington 14, BYU nothing. You're watching Northwest Pac 10 College Football on Prime Sports, where your teams come to play. Husky Stadium, the sun is out, and Washington with a 14-0 lead as we start the second quarter. Rich Waltz and Sonny Sixkiller. And Washington now faced with third down and about nine. First time that BYU has been able to get to the quarterback, not only today, Sonny, but that's their first sack <laughs> all year long. They did not have a sack in the win over Texas A&M, nor the blowout win over Arkansas State. Well, they needed to do something down there. Washington getting close to the red zone. I'll tell you what, third down conversions today, four for four, which is real hot. But, you know, maybe Brock missed the sign. Maybe he missed the call. And a lot of times the quarterback out there, Rich, if the fans don't know it, if you call it on two or you call it on one, there's no way to get out of it unless you call a timeout to change the play. Sometimes you just got to ride with it. There's a look at Lavelle Edwards, the architect of this offense, which has been so productive for so long. All right, let's see what Washington does here. On third down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Heward stepping up. End zone. Picked off. Intercepted. Jason Walker. And a turnover for Washington. Brock Heward had time despite the blitz. Here's a good look. We're looking right down the pipe. We're seeing what Brock's looking at. They came after him. Man to man coverage back there, except for right there. Guy just looking at Brock all the way. Brock needs to look that play off a little bit. He was looking right at the defender, right at the receiver the whole play. Jason Walker with the interception. First interception of the season for the Washington Huskies as far as their quarterbacks. Let's see what BYU can do. It's been a while since we've seen Mr. Sarkeesian on the field. On the draw, not much there. No gain on the play. Brian McKenzie ran into Ink Aliaga. Sarkeesian's numbers, two of seven, 17 yards. You know, on that first drive, Sonny, he missed a couple of open receivers, and they would have been big gainers had they done it. Could have been a lot of times when the Officials put the ball down on the turf. If it's on the threat side where you grip the ball, what happens is you're running out and you're on the run, you're running anyway, and you tend to squeeze the ball a little bit, Rich, it will float on you because of the moisture on the football. Cougars running out of time, and Sarkeesian again having trouble getting the play in from the sideline. I'm not saying that's what happened. It could have been just real lousy throws by Sarkeesian, but normally the way he's been, de been delivering the ball, you wouldn't count on that. So rather than take another five yard delay, the uh, Cougars have elected to take a timeout. 14 nothing Washington on top. The Huskies next week of course taking on Arizona. This BYU team plays in the Western Athletic Conference and for those of you that don't follow college football that closely the WAC underwent a major major change. We'll talk about that in a moment. Here's the Washington schedule. We told you Arizona's in town Stanford after a bye week and then it's on to Notre Dame UCLA and then to Oregon the first eight games of this Washington schedule that's the eighth at USC extremely difficult then you've got Oregon State San Jose State and you finish the season with an always tough game in Pullman always tough game in Pullman I think that SC game November 2nd is going to be one of the toughest games for the Huskies this year uh, but you only take one at a time. I know you talk, talk to these coaches and they don't look beyond next week and next week. This BYU team as I mentioned playing in the WAC the WAC with a couple of well not a couple but a bunch of new members UNLV San Jose State SMU Rice TCU Tulsa 
all joining the WAC, which now has 16 teams in it. And Sonny, BYU, with the kickoff classic win against Texas A&M, a possible WAC championship game, and a possible bowl game, they could play 15 games this year. <laughs> well, they're old enough to handle that schedule. <laughs> the average age, 23 on this BYU team. Second down and 10. At their own 20, Sarkeesian. Lots of time. Throws short and has a man. Hypo McGuire. Not a big gain, just four yards. But again, a lot of time for Sarkeesian, who can really move around in the pocket. There's a good look where he's looking around. All he sees is purple down there. His guys, they do a lot of crossing patterns at BYU. And the Huskies are doing an excellent job of shutting down those lanes. They'll give him that little five yard game. Jerry Jensen made the stop, so it is a game of five. It's third down and five. Cougars need to get just out to the 30 yard line. Chad Lewis, the big tight end in motion. Sarkeesian, nice catch. A tumbling catch by K.O. K.O. Lalui, who had the game winning touchdown catch against Texas A&M. He's a senior out of Hawaii. Very acrobatic receiver. One thing about the receivers for BYU, they will sell their body to make the catch. Not a tremendous throw. He normally would throw away from the defender to, his, to the receiver's right. And good job by the receiver to come back and get it. Kale Lelouie is an interesting receiver. He's not real tall at six feet, but he's very, very strong. I saw his arms, Rich. 200 pounds. On a draw, a Tuaya, and he's out to the 44 yard line. Mark Atuaya. And all of a sudden, Brigham Young is moving the football. Yes, they are. There's a good penetration right there. David Ritchie thought he had something for sure, but a good call by the BYU Cougars. Nice block by James Dye, one of the wide receivers coming back into your picture. Not a very big blocker, I might add. Wild scramble. The ball never left the turf. Dead ball. Ball start. On the offense. Five yards. Still first down. BYU has hurt themselves again. Eric Bateman. That's another thing that's new in college football this year, Sonny. The officials are identifying the guilty parties. So if you move up front or if you're responsible for a penalty, no longer is it offsides defense. It's offsides number of such and such. So the offensive linemen can get their names announced during these telecasts and their parents can <laughs> hear it. Kale Louie in motion. Sarkeesian. McKenzie out to the 45 yard line. Powerful run. Second down and eight, game this is seven. Some, I'm sorry, Rich, but this is something BYU needs to do. Get a little bit of a ground game going so our, the defenders for the Huskies can't just sit back there in those zones and uh, not, you know, not respect the run. Kayla Louie again in motion. Sarkeesian, here comes the blitz. Gets rid of it. It is caught right at midfield, a completion to Itula Mili. Mili, the senior out of Hawaii, one of the two talented tight ends. Inkaliaga made the stop. Wonder if those two played against each other in high school. <laughs> well, if uh, I tell you, it could happen over there. They very fierce football over in Hawaii. Sarkeesian right here. Ink is all over the tight ends today, though. He's been in good coverage. That time the tight end comes back like he's supposed to to the quarterback. And otherwise, if he had just kept, you know, staying flat, he wouldn't have made the throw. Mealy along with Chad Lewis, favorite targets for Sarkeesian. Third down, long four for BYU. Sarkeesian's got a man, and it's in and out of the hands. <laughs> Of Chad Lewis. Chad Lewis. 
on the coverage, Mel Miller. This is a play, I saw him do this in warm-ups. Tight end made an excellent cut, fake to the inside, came back out, just took his eyes off it for a second. That's all it takes. And look at the move here, 86, in and back out. Chad Lewis, you can see why he's the leading receiver when these uh, BYU Cougars. Little post corner look, but he couldn't hold. That was a very well-thrown ball. Right on the money. Faithen with a fair catch at the 14 yard line. That's where Washington will have it. The Huskies off to a quick start. In the second, they lead BYU 14 0. Washington on top 14 0. Rich Waltz, Sonny Six Killer. And we'll see now as the Huskies will take over. Husky profile Thursday at 10 30. If you want to know what's up at the University of Washington, join Chuck Nelson, Heather Foster. They'll be here at 10 30. In fact, they're probably here right now, but Thursday at 10.30 is the time to find them right here on Prime Sports. Why no Chuck's here? Shane Fortney now takes over. So Brock Heward, probably as scripted by the Washington coaches, had his drive. It ended with an interception in the end zone. Fortney takes over on first and 10 from the Huskies' 13-yard line. Mike Reed, the fullback. Mike Reed, the ball carrier. Out to the 15, he's got a couple. Brad Martin on the stop. Second down, down. all eight yards to go on the speed 15. Shane Fortney has used a variety of receivers. One main man in the backfield. Whistle. The plague clock was running down, and the Huskies had to take a timeout. It was down to a couple seconds. So Washington burns the timeout. I guess you have to realize it is early in the season for both of these clubs, although BYU has a couple games under their belt. They did have a week off coming into this one. Washington last week opening at Arizona State. Sonny, I'm curious to see how Arizona State finishes this year. That's, a, that's an interesting football team. Well, I think a lot of clubs uh, can score on them uh, this season. I don't think they'll go undefeated in the Pac-10 conference. And uh, I don't actually, I don't think anyone will go undefeated in the Pac-10 conference this season. Well, Lavelle Edwards went undefeated back in 1984. That's when BYU won a national championship. Washington finished second that year. Yeah, it's uh that was a very good football team that the Huskies had. Purple Rain, good defense, very good offense. 1985 Orange Bowl win over the Boomer Schooner. Ninth winningest all time. Fourth among active coaches, Lavelle Edwards. 216 wins. Second down, eight yards to go. On second and eight now. It's a bootleg. Fortney's still with it. And he's run out of bounds at the 33 yard line. It's just one of the, as we mentioned earlier, when you add that to the offense, the ability of a, a quarterback to pick up positive yardage on design plays, that's a real nice thing to have. If you're an offensive coordinator. Well, having a big guy like Cam Cleveland out there leading you down the field really helps. Good job by Corey Dillon, number four, to sell the run. Held the linebackers in check. Been a big day so far for Fortney. Ten and a half minutes left, first half. 14 nothing. Fortney again with it. He'll keep it to the sideline. Flag down. Back of the 30-yard line. This one may come back. Jim Fogeltance, the referee. Holding against Washington. And a personal foul against Washington. 
completion of two infractions against the Huskies. See if we can get a look at this. You might want to look at 78 on the left of the screen. Mustafa Sophie right there. Yeah, it looks like it's a nice tackle by him. You can see that the referee Fogeltance was right there. Hard to miss that one, Rich. Didn't quite see the personal foul. Whoa. It's a hold and it's a dead ball personal foul. In essence, it's 25, a 25 yard penalty. <laughs> Well, the good news is still first down and 33 yards to go. So offensive coordinator Scott Linehan will look into his book under first and 33 <laughs> on page 12. Of the yardage starting to mount for Washington. Both teams have hurt themselves with penalties here. From his own 10, she is stuffed. Ooh. Nice hit by Lane Hale, the senior safety. And Washington is going nowhere in a real hurry. In fact, they're headed backwards. It'll be second down at about 36. Henry Bloomfield, 91, kind of disrupting the blocking scheme up front there. Going against Big Benji Olson, number 76. Second and 36. The quarterback draw. And Fortney will pick up maybe four. Brad Martin, the sophomore linebacker, made the stop. Along with Shea Muirbrook. Shea Muirbrook on the stop. Third down, 32 yards to go for the Huskies. It is now third down and 32. I think you can throw that third down conversion chart right out the window. It's gone. Little screen to Sheehy. Out to the 15 yard line. BYU making the stop. Darren Yancey and Henry Bloomfield there to make the stop. And so Washington's going to have to punt. Well, Washington didn't do anything to help themselves there, Rich. I mean, that was a little conservative for me. I think that that screenplay would have been a great play on first down. They shouldn't be afraid to throw the ball downfield. They've had success today throwing it. Jeff Prince close to his end zone. James Dye, who took two back for scores last year and had one call back this year, is waiting. And he may never touch this one. Not a good kick as it lands at the 45, and BYU will have excellent field position. Mark it at the 43 yard line. A little bit of shift in momentum. Washington still up by two scores. 14 0 Washington on top of BYU, second quarter, midway through. Next weekend, Big 12 football, Clemson and Missouri at 4 o'clock, and then Nebraska. And Jake Plummer at 7:15, right here on Prime Sports. Sunny, that's going to be an interesting game because Nebraska blew Arizona State out in Lincoln last year. But Jake Plummer and those Sun Devils, as we saw last week, a very different football team this year. A little more confidence, a little more swagger. And Nebraska is as strong as ever. Yeah, I think that Nebraska can probably manhandle them a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure ASU is that tough against the run. Yeah, it'll take a big effort from Arizona State, but if anyone can do it, Jake Plummer could. Sarkeesian now. And the Cougars. On first and ten for the 43. Sarkeesian is stopped and swallowed up. Jason Chorak, the junior, with his second sack. 
of the football game his third of the season. Take a look here just a big power rush right up there Jerry Jensen on the outside there allowing Jason Chorak who had pushed upfield in the middle to get his hands on Steve Sarkeesian. Jerry Jensen had a great game last week you know uh, John Fiala got most sneak because of the number of tackles but I tell you what Jerry Jensen had tackles tackles for loss and sacks last week. Loss of about five Sarkeesian on the move again swings it out to his tight end Mealy. And he's out of bounds at the 48 yard line. I'll tell you what one thing Washington has done defensively Sonny Sarkeesian has been unable to complete passes down the field. Well perhaps that's uh, those little newcomers out there Jermaine Smith and Mel Miller. It wasn't a fluke last week in covering those ASU receivers. I've been watching it downfield here and not, not only that but our our safety Tony Parrish has done a good job number seven for the Huskies stand in coverage. Third down 14. Here comes the blitz Lester Towns on the way it's picked up Sarkeesian to the sidelines overthrows Kayla Louie. And Sarkeesian paid the price. Flag is down at the 46. It might be a roughing the passer. Here's a look. It's hard to see. Lester T Towns. Yeah. Uh, late yeah. hit. Yeah, it was. Didn't quite see the number from that replay. Roughing the passer on the defense. 15 previous block. First down. You could see on that replay that Sarkeesian had released the ball. There was a full count. And then he was hit. You know, and a lot of times an official will let that go if you don't deliver the, the huge hit. If you just kind of back off him and make contact. Well, it was Josh Smith, number 99 for the Huskies, who hadn't had a lot of playing time so far in the first half. And uh, a little overzealous in there to try and get to the quarterback. Three real big penalties in this quarter. Woo. Yep. First down, Brigham Young, Washington's 32 yard line. 63 yards now in penalties. And there's 721 left in the first half. McKenzie straight ahead. David Ritchie got a hold of him. David Ritchie is the stop. Second down and 10. It's coming. Sarkeesian has his man. It's McGuire. Touchdown, BYU. Kaipo McGuire. The crossing pattern. And when BYU floods the zone, Sarkeesian is very good at picking up the open man, as he did here. Boy, they move people right to left and left to right. Kaipo McGuire, number 80, had, has had a lot of yardage and a lot of reception this year. Excellent move right here. Man, oh man, to, I believe that man lost his uniform. Excellent move. And the extra point is good. BYU on the board. Washington, 14. The Cougars of BYU, 7. Six and a half minutes left in this first half. 14 7. With six and a half left in this first half. Kaipo McGuire from Steve Sarkeesian. The Cougars, an NCAA record 263 consecutive games that will stand as they get seven on the board. Corey Dillon back to receive this uh, Ethan Potchman kick, which blows off the tee again. Kind of a swirling wind, Sonny, that has really picked up. It started the game at about 10 miles per hour, but it's blowing to the back of Potchman. 
at about 20 miles an hour right now. So he should get a pretty good lift. And I'd be surprised if he doesn't put this in the back of the end zone. Well, I'm surprised. Ooh, that was headed out of bounds. Dylan gambles. And he's out to the 24 yard line. Close to being out there, Rich. It's a real delicate situation for a return man because if he lets it go and it doesn't, it's a live football. So rather than gamble, he picked it up and went with it. And we'll see what Washington does offensively now with the wind in their face after stumbling on that last drive. Not necessarily because of lack of execution. Here's a look. Well, it looks like it was going out, Sonny. Boy, that official's nose was right there. The two penalties, the hold and the personal foul, a 25 yard infraction just stopped the last Washington drive cold. And to BYU's credit, after the penalties, it was three and out for Washington. Mike Reed off the left side. Maybe a yard. Guy that's come on for BYU, Byron Frisch, in the inside has really come on in the second quarter for the BYU Cougars, has really stuffed up the middle quite well. Before, you know, you got Harlan Ayu, who is six feet, was being manhandled by the Husky offensive line. There he is, 93. AU along with Frisch up front. On second down, quick toss. Pinky went down on one knee to make the catch. It's a nice pickup, short of the first down, though. Third down, long three. Looked like an infielder on that one. Get the knee down to the old baseball player here, huh, Rich? That's right. Keep the ball in front of you. <laughs> That's right. Big third down, I think, here, Rich, for the Huskies. Third and three, five minutes to go in the first half. You don't want to give BYU an opportunity again with this much time with the first half. On third and three, little toss to Dillon. Incomplete. Shane Fortney looking for Corey Dillon out of the backfield. And the Huskies must punt. Boy, I don't know. The Huskies have talked all along about finding the receivers down the middle. We're going to stretch the field. We're going to throw those zones downfield, get those guys in those possession areas. And I don't see that one. That's a very tough catch to, to make and a tough throw. New punter. Amid Sarshar will punt for Washington. Jeff Prince shanking his first punt. And Sarshar headed towards the sideline. Gets a good bounce. And it's down about the 23 yard line. And that's where BYU will put it in play. But remember, the last time they touched it, the Cougars drove down the field and stuck it in the end zone. 46 yard punt by Sarshar. Not bad. You know, going downfield, you expect a 46 yard punt to be a nice spiral. That one looked like a propeller. <laughs> it was going around and around and around. Shows you how strong his leg is. See Coach Lambright look at the clock. Five minutes to go. BYU's got a lot of time. Sarkeesian with a man in motion. On the draw, it's McKenzie. David Ritchie wraps him up. Two-yard two pickup, second and eight. Ink Aliaga is in a position to really second leave him at the line of scrimmage with no gain. However, unable to wrap him up down by the ankles. Sonny, we talked about the pass being one of the calling cards of BYU. The other thing that I think of when you think of BYU, it's comebacks and fourth quarters. For some reason, Brigham Young always seems to play well late in a football game. Sarkeesian dumps it off. It is caught by McKenzie out to the 29 yard line. Brian McKenzie has had a busy day so far, as has Sarkeesian trying to get away from that rush. <laughs> They've been after him all day, but he's done a good job, and at least he keeps the drive alive. He's not throwing it away, and he's not throwing interceptions. And they're gaining a couple yards, three or four. Keeps the drive going.
Little by little, you get the sense that BYU is starting to find their rhythm offensively. Yep. Very much so. Blitz coming. Little dump off. McKenzie bobbles it. It might be live. Mac Tuiea falling on it, and it's incomplete. It's not a lateral, but it's very close. John Fiala out there all over him. I don't blame him for looking upfield and seeing number 57 coming at you. Jerome Payton back for Alan Boardman's kick. Payton trying to pick his way through, does, gets outside. Trying to beat Boardman to the corner. He's out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Last week it was a 65 yard return for a touchdown by Dave Janoski. Here, Jerome Payton with what turns into a 25 yard return. Did a good, good job. Position. Did a good job initially of catching the football and looking at the defense and giving him an option. They came down, settled down, and gave him an option. And with his speed and athletic ability, man, just jumping outside, looked like a deer running out there. Courtney changing the play. The blitz picked up. And Janoski with a nice catch. Dave's second catch of the day. Great job. This, this guy has been a tremendous man to have around this program. He's a senior. He's a co-captain this year. Smart young man. Has made at least one reception in 15 straight games. Little slow to get up. <laughs> I don't blame him. That was a heck of a hit put on him. Omar Morgan made the stop. That blanket. Gain of six. Reed in motion. And Mike Reed has it. Inside the 30. Nice plays out of the 29 yard line. It helps to have guys out of the backfield that can catch footballs. And Reed can do that. Huskies are blessed with good receivers out of the backfield. You got Corey Dillon's good hands, Rashawn Sheehy, Mike Reed, number 36 down here, has been much of a decoy in the past. Here he's getting an opportunity to catch the football. And he's a big load, local kid out of Tacoma. On first and 10. Getting close to two minutes left in this first half. Reed now, flags go down. As does Reed at the 26. Looks like BYU is a little anxious there, Rich. We'll take a timeout. When we get back, we'll find out what the penalty is. Washington 14, BYU 7. Welcome back, 14 7. Offsides, BYU. Washington first and five. From the BYU 24, Mike Reed straight up the gut down to the 16. The stop made by Jason Walker. And all of a sudden, Mike Reed is Showcase. the feature back <laughs> on this drive. They're showcasing him. They don't want his confidence to get too low, and he's responding. I'll tell you what, Olin Krut, 77, Benji Olson, Bob Sapp right up the middle. Great surge, good block right there. Boy, Benji Olson, tremendous block on the middle backer. Shea Merbrook didn't know what hit him. Reed again. This time he spins as he's hit. Byron Frisch made the first stop. That may be the reason you see a Reed in there. Washington feels that they can run right at Brigham Young. And using a guy like Reed at six foot 215 pounds is one way to do it. I just hope the Huskies are planning on trying to get in the end zone and not setting themselves up for a field goal. One minute left. Husky fans would rather see the big six. Ball to BYU 15, second down. And about 10. Fortney to the sideline. 
Hathen could not spin away from coverage. Now to the seven. And maybe time for a timeout. And Washington will burn one. 36 seconds left. One thing on that play, you saw Shane Fortney. You talk about Brock Heward's arm, but that was a long throw from the near hash mark to the far side of the field. Payton making a good grab on a low throw, but it was there in a hurry. Here's Bill Dietrich in there, the quarterback coach. Working with those young guys. Ken Schmidt, the defensive coordinator for BYU, surrounded by the Cougars. By the old guys. <laughs> I tell you that's one thing Rich their coaching staff has been with Lavelle Edwards for a long time There's several have been there 15 years 18 years a lot of continuity down there with that program earlier this week we asked offensive coordinator Scott Linehan what he thought they could accomplish Washington against BYU that's a good they sit in there and they make it run it. They, they make a commitment to stop the running game and in the, in the meantime they've got a very very solid secondary they've got the uh, a couple of corners that made some really nice plays against uh, against AM and m and uh, some that we've seen recently in Arkansas, Arkansas State game. So to me, it's a uh, it's a pretty good compliment to their offense because they don't they they don't uh, I guess they just don't mess it up. There's something to be said for not messing it up, and he's right. BYU's defense obviously overlooked with all the quarterbacks and passing that has come out of Provo, but it's a BYU defense that has been good enough to get the job done. Well, let's see if they can do it here. Third down one. Reed and Sheehy in the backfield. Sheehy inside the five. He'll have the first down. Washington will use their final timeout of the first half. 30 well, seconds left and a chance to slam it in no they didn't take the time no, no. clock stops they don't need to lots of time she he short of the first down or short of the end zone and now they'll have to burn the timeout Sonny. yep I thought they had burned it the first time but you're right with the clock stopping on the first down so instead of 31 seconds and three shots at it Washington now has 18 seconds and two shots at good time. I'd love to see him do a little bootleg and have Shane Fortney force the corner and either throw it or keep it and run it in. I love to see the power. I just got full back tail back turn around hand off and hit that line of scrimmage. If you're thinking about a bootleg and Fortney rolling remember though short side of the field is to his right side. So if they do call that play he'll be rolling to his left. If you're Brigham Young at this situation, Sonny, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for them, like Coach Linehan said, defend the run first and hang in there because right on the one yard line, most teams you think can gain a yard, particularly off tackle. Fourteen seven, Washington on top. A lot of buzz in the crowd here. The Husky fans are a little anxious. You know, the real danger here, Sonny, is it, it's second down and short. If they run a play and don't get in, they can't stop the clock. They've got no, because if they stop the clock, they automatically have to kick a field goal unless they go for it on fourth down, because it would burn it down and you'd get to fourth down. That's why I thought they would call the timeout after they got the first down. But if they can stick it in the end zone, the point is moot. There's your call. He's in. Touchdown, Huskies. Good job. Good look here. It's not really a play action pass, but a little bit of option on the far side of the field. I tell you, you got a quarterback that big, you got to utilize it. He had a pitch man, but you're not going to stop a quarterback with an arm tackle inside the red zone like this you look at this right here no way Jason Walker too. good call by the Husky coaching staff Shane 
Courtney will stay on and hold for the extra point. Well, Rashawn Sheehy has a couple of touchdowns. And Fortney now with one. Wales for the kick. It is good. 21-7 with 13 ticks left on the clock. Pretty impressive drive, Sonny. Yes, it is. And you notice the Husky players are running off the field after the point after BYU has taken a slow walk to the sideline. It almost seemed like Washington felt with Mike Reed in the backfield they could just grind this one out. And that that they did down the field. Well, one of the things coming in is ball control, time of possession, keeping the ball away from number 12, Steve Sarkeesian. And they did it. They just happened to showcase somebody we didn't expect they were going to showcase, and Mike Reed responded. Michigan. Now Washington has to be aware that BYU has excellent return men. Got John Wales back in there. Rich. Wales will kick it off. Randy Jones has been kicking off. Wales. There's a look at James Dye, first team whack pick last year, special teams player of the year in the conference. John Wales will kick off. And Ronnie Jenkins, who's back there as well, is currently tenth in the nation in kickoff returns. This is Jenkins. Good hit. He's down at the 30 yard line. Anthony Hicks made the stop. Looks like a Kaika Malloy, 20, was in there. He's always been a big time hitter for the Husky program. Here's a look at it. One thing that big high kick does, it does let your coverage on the kickoff get down there and kind of make a little wall. Yep. Akaika, you're right. Hicks, Hicks had him low and Malloy had him high. It's the way you want him. You hit him high, I'll hit him low. Sarkeesian, who has spent most of this first half running for his life, has seven seconds left. Flag goes down, whistle stops the play. Boy, both teams seem a little bit disjointed in this first half, Sonny. Well, I, I, the penalties for the Huskies have made them disjointed. Other than that, I thought, think they've done quite well. Yeah, I was alluding to the penalties. Oh, the flags. Well, uh, you know. The... Excuse me, Rich. My thoughts were elsewhere. I was looking at halftime and that hot dog. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, I was. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's early in the season, but these two teams have combined. I would expect for close to 150 yards in penalties now. Seven seconds to be on the clock. Seven seconds. Thank you. Thank you. First down, 15 yards to go. First down and 15. Sarkeesian over Malloy. And looking for Itula Mili, his tight end, who was open. Sarkeesian, when he's had time, Sonny, has not been all that accurate today. Not as much as we thought coming into the ball game. You know, we're going, oh man, you got Jake Plummer last week, Steve Sarkeesian this week. Those guys are, what, 73% of his passes being completed? You do remember against Texas A&M, their wideouts made some very spectacular acrobatic catches. And so maybe he's not as accurate as we all think. You can see Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator for BYU, I think probably telling Sarkeesian just to take a knee and run it out with two seconds left. Lavelle Edwards didn't look real happy in that shot, but he never looks real happy. Even when he's happy, he doesn't look real happy, and he said that in, earlier this week. He's happy on the inside, he just doesn't look like That's it. That's what he said. First and 30. I think Sarkeesian going to go to one knee here. Yep. So BYU will head into the locker room down by 14 points. Washington in their home opener. So far, 
So good. Washington 21, BYU 7. 21 7, your halftime score. 21 points is good offensively, Sonny Six Killer, but I think the impressive part, just seven for BYU. That is right. Uh, keeping them off the field by controlling the line of scrimmage and having long drives and getting a touchdown. First half highlights in this one, and they were early highlights dominated by Rashawn Sheehy. The first time Washington touched the football, 84 yards. This the 13th play of the drive. Sheehy, a four yard touchdown run. Excellent run. Good blocking up front. Cam Cleland and Mike Reed. Giving him a big hole to run through and speed gets it there. The next time Washington touched the ball, 71 yards in just four plays, and a lot of them came here on this 45-yard run. Sheehy with another touchdown. Well, big guys are leading around the corner. Benji Olsen, of course, number 76. But as I mentioned on the last play, speed does get it, and he get, shows it right here. Jerome Payton also with a big block downfield to let him in the end zone. You know, it looked like a blowout at that point. And Washington, next time they touched it, they drove down the field again. Jason Walker picked off Brock Heward in the end zone, and then BYU got started. Steve Sarkeesian, a little crossing pattern. Kaipo McGuire for 32 yards. Excellent play. Kaipo's been doing it last, the whole season for these guys. And right here, you see a tremendous play right there to juke the defensive back and get in the end zone. All this set up by roughing the passing penalty. That was early in the second quarter. Washington added another one on Shane Fortney's run, and that's how we've arrived at 21-7. Second half kickoff after this. Rich Waltz, Sonny Six Killer, back Husky Stadium, Washington 21, BYU 7. Sonny, we talked about it earlier, and I'd like to touch upon it again. BYU, well known as a second half team, and in particular, a fourth quarter football team. Yeah, they put up a lot of points in the fourth quarter this year 32 to 3, I believe it is, and uh, Huskies are, is never over till it's over. From his four, this is Ronnie Jenkins. And Jenkins is taken down at the 27 yard line. And Kaika Malloy made the stop. All right, numbers from the first half. Rushing yardage, impressive for Washington. Overall yardage, the Huskies dominated. And it could be a lot worse than it is. If you're BYU and you come in at halftime down 21 7, you look at the interception of the end zone, all the penalties. Washington made some pretty big mistakes in that first half but still move the football at times at will. Sarkeesian to the sideline. Has a man, it's his tight end, Mealy. And Itula Mealy is out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Mealy and Chad Lewis are almost like wide receivers, Sonny. They yes, move they them around, they split them out, and they run excellent patterns. Sarkeesian had a choice this time, actually. Chad Lewis was open in the middle. Mealy was open on the outside. And they will do this a lot. We talked about it before. Five to ten yards downfield. They're not going to come out here and try and throw bombs and get back in the ball game. They're going to come out and do what they do best. Sarkeesian was hit as he threw, and he's not moving real well right now. It's a first down. First and ten, BYU at the 42-yard line. Blitz coming. Sarkeesian off balance to the sidelines. Flag is down. James Dye with the catch. But it may be coming back. Big tackle, I believe it was 59 for BYU. James Johnson, the left guard, <laughs> just he just bulldogged the, the Husky defender down on the ground. Bear hugged him. Holding Brigham Young, roughing the passer, Washington. Sarkeesian kind of shakes his head and as if to say, look, if I'm going to get hit like that, let's have the play count for something, shall we? David Ritchie coming in and sending Sarkeesian to the turf. The offset each other. So there's no play, although Sarkeesian will, will tell you that there was a, a significant <laughs> hit. <laughs> yes, there was. <laughs> well, David Ritchie being a senior, you know, normally he'd come in. I believe the official threw that because he dropped his helmet down, put his little head down, and it was a fairly a it was a fairly late hit. What is that? 117 yards now in yardage. And neither of those penalties count on that total. They couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Fogeltance noting that there's a five second discrepancy. Thank you. 
They're doing their job, Rich. Dustin Johnson. John Fiala made the stop. Dustin Johnson, the ball carrier. Look at this. Dustin Johnson's not an easy guy to bring down. He's 235 pounds. John Fiala scraping off the inside there, right off Mac Tuiaea to make the play. It's like they drew it up in practice. Big Mac's starting to assert himself a little bit. And the more he asserts himself on that D line, the better these guys are going to play at linebacker. John Fiala, of course, 22 tackles last week. It's hard to top that. But another. Yeah, they're having trouble syncing the clocks up still on either side of the uh, field. 14:22 on one clock, 14:40 on another. And you may not think it matters right now, but when you get into the fourth quarter, as often happens with BYU, every second counts. Well, Edwards is just shaking his head, going, "Okay, East End is official. What does that make the West End then?" <laughs> I just wonder if Lavelle knows which is East and West. He does, believe me. Although he's used to throwing the football north and south <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Second and nine from the 44-yard line. Sarkeesian over the middle. It's Johnson and he's out to the 44 yard line. That's a first down. One thing there's a flag down as well and it might be holding against BYU. One thing the uh, Cougars did not do much of Sonny successfully in the first half was throw to their men out of the backfield. That's usually a big part of their offense. Yes it is right here. You're going to see a little hold right up the middle there. Jeez just threw him to the ground. Eric Bateman. You know one thing about the BYU offensive line, Rich, they're all. Across the board, 6'7, 6'7, 6'6, 6'7. The center is the shortest guy at 6'3. Well, there's a lot of BYU, you know, you talk about the quarterbacks in the NFL, but Brigham Young has put some offensive linemen in there as well. Mike Kime of the uh, Seahawks, Trevor Maddich of the Redskins, Bart Oates of the 49ers. You got to protect those good quarterbacks, and they do that in Pro Bowl. Sarkeesian to the sidelines. Gorgeous pass. Has his man, Kaipo McGuire, at the 44 yard line. Not an easy ball to throw, but Sarkeesian did it nicely. That time he had a lot of time. You'll see right here. Once a quarterback can get back in the pocket, get himself set, and plant his leg and drive forward with the football, you're going to see throws just like this. You can see where he used to be a former baseball player with that type of throw. Jermaine Smith on the coverage. Third down now. And nine. And Sarkeesian doesn't like what he sees. He calls timeout. He only had five seconds to call an audible. He sensed that the Huskies were going to be blitzing, and it did look like they were going to come with the backers. See if that'll come back and get him later, Rich. Both teams had to use timeouts early in the first half. And so BYU has to use their first here in the second half. Friday night, 6 o'clock. Hope you'll get out the remote and switch it to Prime Sports and find Husky football with Jim Lambright. Friday night, 6 o'clock. 
right here on Prime Sports. Just about a full house on hand Husky Stadium Washington a 21 7 halftime lead Jim Lambright along with defensive assistant Scott Pelour surrounded by Huskies right now. Brigham Young in their initial drive of the second half moving the football but they've been stopped by penalties. Something that has hurt both sidelines in today's football game. You see Nigel Burton there getting some last minute instructions. Burton is an interesting guy. He's kind of the the jack of all trades in that defensive backfield. Sophomore transfer out of the University of Pacific. He can play safety and can play corner. Let's see what Lavelle Edwards has cooked up on third down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Sarkeesian in trouble. It's incomplete. He was looking for Jermaine Dye. Penalty flag goes down. Jermaine Smith covering Dye. Here's a look. Was this a late flag? A lot of pressure right here. Sarkeesian getting pumped once again. Ink giving a little shoulder nudge. Seemed like a, a late throw. Late flag. Obviously not the definitive shot. Defensive pass interference is the call. Here's a better look. You can see the pressure from the left, number 54, Inc. Watch the end of this play. I didn't quite see the uh, interference. Smith had his hands on him, although you would argue if it was a catchable pass. That's a good call, Rich. And in college football, of course, not a point of foul, but a 15 yard penalty, which can help you on the long ones and hurt you on the short ones. Young man's played well today as he did last week, but there again, the penalties. That's some healthy yardage there, Sonny. What is that, 142 now and counting? Well, the Huskies haven't fooled around with the little minor penalties today. No, they've been the big ones. Yeah. A very disjointed beginning to this second half. And only three minutes has escaped the clock. First and ten now. Sarkeesian and the Cougars at Washington's 41 yard line. Throw short, got a man. A Tuaya to the 29 yard line. Steve Sarkeesian looks much more comfortable here in the second half than he did in the first. Well, we're making these little throws like this to like a Tuaya. You know, those are just, he's just looking down the field, what the defense has given him. He's just dumping it off. But that's their game. First down, BYU. Little bootleg action. Swinging out to the tight end, Mealy. And he tackled himself at the 25. Although Mel Miller was out there on the coverage. But you can see how BYU likes to utilize their tight ends. Gain of four. You can see why too Rich there are big guys six four and six six they just run a nice little scheme and it's really basic really that when one one tight end clears the defenders the other one breaks behind to the flat they've been doing it a long time it must be working 12 of 18 118 yards one touchdown has not been picked off second and a long five over the middle to die incomplete. Parrish and Miller colliding. James Dye was the intended receiver. That had interception written all over it, but it was written for both players. Both Parrish and Miller had a beat on this ball. You can see this one coming all the way. Sarkeesian, no doubt where he was going to be going with the football. 
Ooh, what a collision and I tell you it's uh, Tony Parrish probably got the wind knocked out of him there. Well that's one way to get rid of the defensive coverage today. Well James Dye was open briefly but Sarkeesian's throw a little bit late on the break. There's Miller he's on the sideline both these players are down right now. Miller is on the sidelines and Parrish is down near the goal line. Here's an end zone look. Good look at it right here. Good coverage. He was as you're right he was open early but by the time he got to the ball. Now one thing they'll do here bring Kyle Roberts probably back in at Rover and move Nigel Burton back out at the corner. You know without Toure Butler who is still waiting for NCAA clearance this Husky secondary is still a little bit thin and they can ill afford to lose one let alone two of their defensive backfield. So Parrish is on his way to the sidelines. Miller is already over there. Alex Hollowell is in the game. Nigel Burton will stay in as well. Nigel will take over for Tony Parrish back at the free safety. And Alex Hollowell at the corner. Third down and six. Sarkeesian unloading quickly and overthrowing his target. He has spent a good deal of time in that position today. <laughs> Jason Chorak and David Ritchie have rattled his bones a few times today. Good pressure on third down, Rich. Sarkeesian's a tough nut, though. I mean, he'll be back for more. Had to get rid of the football and darn near a good play. Well, he got a little nudge from his own player. BYU now Potchman with the field goal attempt and he drills it. So Ethan Potchman with a 42 yard field goal and it's 21 10. 21 10 Washington on top of BYU Ethan Potchman with a 42 yard field goal after the Washington defense stopped BYU on the opening drive of this second half and the real concern for Washington is the health of their defensive backfield the collision between Mel Miller and Tony Parrish. Corey Dillon Hotchman will kick off. Corey Dillon and Joe Jarzenka and it's Dillon at his four. Still on his feet and he's out close to the 30 yard line. So Washington will put it in place. Sonny again here's that that collision between Mel Miller and Tony Parrish. James Dye the intended receiver. And a violent collision and everyone obviously hoping that those two are OK. Well you don't really pay attention what's going on with your own defender. You're looking at the ball and you're solely on the ball quarterback size ball. You don't really think about where everybody else is. I hope they're OK. All right Shane Fortney now who had a very very efficient first half. He'll take over Washington's first possession of the second half. Rashad Sheehy looking for room and he's out to the 34 yard line. Gain of four. Sheehy had 92 yards in that first half. Courtney was outstanding. He was 10 of 13, 94 yards. And Sheehy four yards away from 100. There's Brock Heward on the sideline. He was one of four. One of those incompletions, however, an interception in the end zone. Fortney throwing short, looking for Janoski. It's overthrown. Not a lot of room in there to make a completion. That's a tough throw. Changes came up, must have been a call play. See Janoski right there in the middle, kind of hesitating, breaking. Actually a little bit of a nudge knocking him off balance. Third down. Six yards to go. 
Heward doesn't look altogether healthy on the sideline. I wonder if he's either winded or has been banged up a little bit. That pass behind Janoski, it's incomplete. Jim Lambright making a nice catch. And BYU's defense holds. Washington will have to give it up with an 11 point lead. Shane looking to his left all the way, knew where the ball was going to be going. Tough catch again. Uh, two off throws by Shane here on this series. Makes it real tough for the Huskies. Now they're going to give the ball back to uh, BYU in a hurry. James Dye is deep. That whole sequence probably took about a minute for three plays. And that first BYU drive took about 20 minutes for three minutes off the clock. Jeff Prince with the punt. Here comes Dye. At the 28 yard line. No flags. And that's saying something today. No flags on the play. They'll mark it at the 30. We'll take a timeout. Washington on top of BYU on what has turned into a gorgeous day at Husky Stadium. 21 0 Washington on top of BYU. Just underway, third quarter. Brigham Young, their second possession. Hey, if you'd like to keep up with the Huskies on the web, there is the address, my friends, washington.edu backslash Husky Sports. If you surf the web, Sonny, do you surf the web? And I don't mean surf the cut, that being the Montlake cut, but. Well, actually, we just got hooked up with it. Uh, my son's going to be going to Dartmouth next year, so now we're on the old net. We can talk. You can chat with we your son. We can chat. You know, and I don't think it costs as much. And they have it <laughs> from Seattle to New Hampshire. All right, here we go. BYU touching the football. What did BYU do right in that first possession? Because although there were penalties and it took about 20 minutes, they did move the football from one end of the field to the other. Short passes, tight ends and backs. Sarkeesian. Another short pass and another completion out to the 36 yard line. Chad Lewis, the tight end, made the catch. This is what BYU does best, Sonny. Not necessarily stretch the field vertically, but spread the field and pick up six, seven yards on a completion. They just go for those little, little zones underneath, Rich. Not really looking for the big play, but they will look for it and they will call it if it's there. Little movement. Hey, there's a surprise. Flags are down. Ball start on the offense, five yards. Eric Bateman, I think, was the guilty party, although they have stopped announcing numbers now. They started at the beginning of the game, and they're supposed to do that in college football this year. It all but wipes out that first down pass to Lewis, second and nine. Chorak with a good rush. Sarkeesian to the sidelines. Got a man. It's caught. Kaipo McGuire. I don't know if he tweaked an ankle when he came down, but a nice job of tight roping the sidelines. McGuire with his third catch of the game. That's a very good play. On such a long second and nine. You got Alex Hollowell 15 out there with just a little bit too much cushion. And Kaipo, good job. I can't tell where he tweaked his knee or his ankle on that play. On first down, Sarkeesian in trouble. Down he goes. Tuiaea with the sack. Mac, the freshman out of West Richland. This is going to be good for his confidence to build it up here. Jerry Jensen again back there creating a little havoc. Mac Tuiaea using that big body of his. That's what the Huskies need from that D line, Rich. Tuiaea with the sack. You know, after that collision, 
Tony Parrish has returned, but Mel Miller has not. A loss of nine. Sarkeesian, lots of room in front of him. He'll dart for the sidelines and just get out of bounds right at midfield. Sarkeesian chased out of bounds by Ink Galliaga. Well, you wonder why you get so much room to roam around back there, but you, when you're rushing four linemen like that, and the, the idea is to crush them all inside, he's going to get outside, the quarterback is, and our linebackers are flying so far back. There's a, I mean, what was the yard? He's 15, 20 yards before another defender? Ethan Potchman, who hit on a 42 yard field goal. Sarkeesian, you know, the comparisons to Jake Plummer of last week, Sarkeesian a little more daring. That one is caught. Kayla Louie is out of bounds at the 32 yard line. K O Kayla Louie K -O. from Steve <laughs> Sarkeesian. Excellent job. Watch right here. Look at the linebackers. Everybody's coming. Nigel Burton coming from the safety position. Leaves it one on one and a little pick right there. Kaipo McGuire shielding Tony Parrish so he couldn't get out to the coverage. Kayla Louie who was averaging 30 yards a catch from that man Sarkeesian. The point I was making though, Sarkeesian seems to be a little more hard nosed than a, than a Jake Plummer. A little more likely to stick his head down. Plummer may be a little more nifty in the pocket whereas Sarkeesian likes to get outside the pocket and roam around. As he does here he's got his man wide open Chad Lewis the catch big collision he's down at the 16 yard line. Lewis the big tight end who rambled out was wide open. It's a 16 yard pickup. He paid for it. But another nice pattern you can see Lewis a little look in little look out. That's it misdirection faked a little run play in there and oh, Alex Hollowell with a big hit. And BYU is knocking on the door at the 11. The Cougars over 100 yards here in the second half. Sarkeesian on a draw. The big man Dustin Johnson staying on his feet and gaining maybe a yard. Jason Chorak the first to hit him. Jason Chorak is so you know bent on getting back to the quarterback in that quarterback area so fast he's so determined and we noticed that last week against ASU sometimes you got to scale it down and make the play and it's really tough right here there he goes hard to tackle with an arm tackle with a big guy like that John Fiala made the final stop certainly BYU is in field goal range but the Cougars would like seven. The Washington 15 Sarkeesian in trouble steps up delivers the pass Kayla Louie couldn't hold it and it's incomplete. Nigel Burton was his shadow. Three Huskies again in position certainly applying pressure but close to Sarkeesian for a sack. Let's see if we can get a look here it is. David Ritchie blowing in nice and clean. Oh. I believe that was Chorak, 46. That ball should have been caught. Kayla Louie doesn't drop many of them, but he did that time. Burton was with him step for step. Three of eight on third down. Third down and nine. From just inside the Washington 16. Sarkeesian to the corner, incomplete. He was looking for Kaipo McGuire. Jermaine Smith on the coverage. Excellent coverage by Jermaine Smith. I tell you, that guy has really stepped it up. One questionable call on him today with a pass interference, which I didn't think really was, but that's their call. Excellent coverage. And now Ethan Potchman will come in. Ethan Potchman will kick. Potchman, one of two in the ball game. He missed a 45 yarder and he hit a 42 yarder. This one is plenty high. No good. So Potchman misses from 34. 21 10, Washington. 21 10, BYU missing a 33 yard field goal by Ethan Potchman, and Washington right back at it. At the 20 yard line. 
well, let's see this quarter Huskies have had a what a minute. They need to sustain a little drive here. BYU has moved the sticks and has three points to show in the second half. Shane Fortney. The bootleg worked in the first half delivers the pass and it's caught at the 32 yard line. Nicely done Cam Cleland. Sonny you're always a guy that advocates going to the tight ends. They went to Cleveland in the first half and they're back at him here in the second. Well in a straight drop back pass situation he's always going to be around the middle somewhere on a play action pass right here going to the same side as big Cam Cleveland. Now there's an opportunity for the Huskies utilize their tight ends much like BYU and get nice yardage and drive the ball down the field. A look at Cleveland who caught that 36 yard touchdown pass against Arizona State last week. Mike Reed in motion. Sheehy. Stopped at the 37 yard line. Gain of four. Sheehy up over that 100 yard mark now. Here's a good look at it again, Rich. I, they're spreading it out, one back formation, power ahead, but big Bob Sapp, 72. He had his guy wrapped up. Janoski in motion. Fortney had to deliver it early. And that might be a situation where a receiver has got to be aware of a blitz and get the route run a little bit quicker. Much like BYU did on the series where we the Huskies blitz. You take a look at it right here. Janoski coming down two step drop. Got to get rid of the football. Not much you could do on that. Your head has to act like a swivel and turn as immediately as your foot plants. Fortney's numbers. 11 of 17. One for four in the second half. Reed in motion. That one is deflected and almost intercepted. On third down and short, it's incomplete. Harland Ayu. The junior out of Hawaii with the deflection. And not only has BYU's offense come out here in the second half and executed, but very quietly, BYU's defense has stopped Washington cold. That's one though. Shane Fortney telegraphed that all the way for a six foot defensive lineman to knock your pass down. You got to be showing him where you're throwing the football. Jeff Prince to punt it away. A wobbler. James Dye will take it. Nifty move. He's still on his feet. James Dye. He's tripped up at the 43 yard line. Gerald Harris got him. The WAC special teams player of the year last year shows exactly why. Yes, he does. Looks like the Huskies had him down there. I don't know why the defender right there just dove his ground, hit head into the ground. That Keep was Harris. Up. You know, that was Harris that made the initial hit. Nine? And I think Harris was the guy that caught him from behind. He did. Gerald was the first and the last man to touch him on the return. Boy, he needed to make up for that futile attempt in the beginning. 150 pounds. Very nifty. Transfer out of Utah State. And Sarkeesian and company get the football. At the 43. Running around Sarkeesian. Man open. It's Dye who makes the catch. James Dye to the 26 yard line. Flag is down at the 48. This one may come back. Well, if we believe Jason Chorak, who's down on the ground, pumping his hands. A preliminary indication of holding. holding against Brigham Young. And if you think Lavelle Edwards looks grumpy just about every time, he's not real happy right now. Lots of time. Still a pretty good throw by Sarkeesian to Mr. Die. Huskies need to button down a little bit, not allow those big receptions like that. Torek's been very active today, Rich. 
He's part of that linebacking core. The penalties mounting as we speak. <laughs> we may get to 200 before the game is over. Five minutes left in this third quarter. BYU back in their own territory. Sarkeesian deflected and almost intercepted. John Fiala out there in the coverage. Dustin Johnson looked like he was grabbing it, but I believe it was meant for the tight end. The two Mealy. Actually, it was. It, it went out of Johnson's hands, and there was Mealy waiting for it. Tough to tell who he was looking for. Yeah, that's a tough catch either way. Fiala was between them and almost ended up with a football. Second down and 24 from the 43. Flag goes down, and I think Larry Moore, the center, sort of sputtered as he tried to snap the football. Prior to the snap, illegal snap, on the offense, five yards, repeat second down. You think Lavelle Edwards is uh, pulling his hair out on the sidelines with a place like this? Larry Moore, Jr. Neither coach can be happy with this because both teams have hurt themselves. Look at the yardage. BYU is almost at the 100 mark, but Washington's not far behind. Second down and 29. Mealy. Nice catch, nice move. He's out of bounds. Etula Mealy. Part of that tight end pair of Lewis and Mealy, who really have That's looked very, Etula very Mealy. effective today. Just down and out. Clearing right there by the other receiver, Johnson. Kyle Roberts doing what you're supposed to do with a big man. Hit him low. Unfortunately, I must have closed his eyes. Mealy did a tremendous job getting in the air and avoiding the tackle. 6'4", 235. And he had no problems getting up and over Roberts. Very athletic 6'4", 235. It turned down second and 29 to third down and nine at the 42-yard line of Washington. Sarkeesian in trouble, going down! Chris Campbell and David Ritchie. Here's a good look at it. Two EIA are pushing forward. Two, to, two offensive linemen trying to block him. David Ritchie and Campbell coming through. David Ritchie's been around and sniffing him all day. He finally gets to him. Alan Boardman will have to punt. And he was hit. Flag will go down. BYU's going to get this one back. Payton at his 20 is swallowed up. If it's running in, I don't know. They hit him pretty. They hit him pretty good, Sonny. I would suspect this is a 15 yard and a first down. Fourth down and 17. Preliminary indication of running into the kicker against the Huskies. Let's wait. Running in the kicker. Against the receiving team. Five yard penalty. That's a break for Washington. Big break. Because they really put a good hit on Allen Boardman. And Lavelle Edwards is not real happy. Neither is the BYU sideline. Well, Sarkeesian looks like they're going to go out and take the ball. Uh, you, I'll tell you why. Because BYU felt it was an automatic first down and a 15 yard penalty. Roughing the kicker is a personal foul, and it's a first down. And the Cougars will simply have to punt this again. Running right kicker. If the defense be five yards, repeat fourth down. Big break. So Boardman will get another kick. Fourth down, 12 yards to go. Jim Lambright. Alan Boardman back His Huskies have been unable to move the football here in the third quarter. 
Jerome Payton back at the 10. Lots of room for Boardman this time. Payton a fair catch. Nice special teams work and rolls into the end zone. BYU almost had an opportunity to down that. Right on the goal line, Derek Stevenson could not down it. He tried to knock it in and hold it for one of his teammates, but by the time help arrived, it had trickled into the end zone. So Washington gets it at the 20 yard line. Is this a strange quarter or what? It started out strange, and it looks like it's ending up strange. The Husky offense, however, needs to get something going. We don't want to go in the tank. Really? 21 10? Great effort right there, Stevenson. It's one thing about a football, you never know where it's going to hop. Interesting to see if the offense gets in gear now. Fortney on play action. He'll keep it to the sidelines. He gets there. First down, a pickup of about 12. As well as the offense moved in the first half, and certainly they did, but they did a lot of it on the ground, not only with Rashawn Sheehy, but also Shane Fortney. Who had 42 yards rushing in the first half? Well, this is a great call for Shane Fortney. The guy can run the football. And what you need to do in the first other first two series of the second half, the Huskies haven't really used him or utilized his strength. Sheehy up the middle, tripped over the 39, very close to a big game. Shane Muirbrook got a hand on him and tripped him up. Very close. Very close. Look at the interior of the line. You look in there, Henry Bloomfield, 91. The Huskies are excellent blocking. Olin Fruits right there. Benji Olson's having a pretty good day so far up there in the interior front. Cracked 100, Rich. There he is at 107. Sheehy again, this time to the outside. Good block by Reed, and there goes Sheehy. He's out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Mike Reed had gone in motion and came back and had a nice seal block on the outside. Shea Muirbrook made the stop. Talk about a change of direction. Nothing up the middle that time, but this is what makes him exciting. He's got the speed to be able to get outside, make these kind of plays, and thanks to the official as well to screen off the defender and let, allow him more yardage. But you could see Reed coming back into the play, picking off the corner, and that allowed Sheehy to get outside. It was either Reed or the guy in stripes. I wasn't quite sure. A double team. Sheehy again in trouble. Again bends it outside. Oh. And straight ahead he goes to the 37 yard line. Jason Walker made the stop. Along with Ben Cook, the junior. People are going to look at this film and think, oh, the Huskies don't really have designated holes like the two hole, four hole, six hole. They say, hey, just go straight ahead and let Rashawn Sheehy go wherever, let him go where he wants to. Spencer Reed made the initial penetration, and Sheehy, with a nice move, got by him. Great stiff arm out there, and then a power just take him on and power through him. People forget how strong he is. Muscular, his upper body is very strong. Second and short, good down to throw. Fortney to the air. Payton with a catch. At the 32 yard line, Jerome Payton. Six yard pickup, first down Washington. I tell you, the DBs have to really watch Jerome Payton out there. Quick release by Shane Fortney, but if you're not right on him, I'm telling you, that little spin move, he could go. Look at, look at the size of those are. 6'3, 225. Mike Reed off right tackle. Spencer Reed made the stop along with Henry Bloomfield. And one of the
one of the Huskies is down right now. Looks like Cam Cleveland, the tight end. Could be a stinger. They're not looking at the knees. Here's it's another look. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Cleveland. Big Cam 85 right there blocking from Frank Reed, or excuse me, Mike Reed. It's hard to tell exactly what happened there. Looks like he was knocked off balance in that right shoulder area. Well, you're going one way, and somebody's big old thigh knocks your head the other way. It's going to give you that little twitch in that neck. No matter how much you work on it, how strong it is, he should be able to get back in this ball game. At least it's not an ankle or a knee. Someone down below. The Huskies are pretty deep at tight end. Cam Kissel and Jeremy Brigham has, have also seen playing time this year. You don't miss much with Jeremy Brigham coming in. He's 6'6, 260 pounds, Rich. Shane Fortney now. He's got both Sheehy and Dylan in the backfield on second and seven. Sheehy in motion. He'll throw it to the end zone. Janowski touchdown. Dave Janowski from Shane Fortney. Twenty eight yards. Watch this Rich. Shane Fortney does a great job wanted to go the tight end Brigham covered real well just a little look like a little flip of the wrist right here to Janoski wide open look like Ben Cook just lost coverage. Spent too much time looking back at the line of scrimmage. Extra point no good. A minute 53 left in this third quarter. Washington on the board again, 27-10. A missed extra point. Does it come back to hurt Washington? Only time will tell. There's a minute 53 left in the third quarter. Randy Jones will kick off. Not the sinker baller, but the place kicker. A short kick. BYU still with it is Ned Stearns. And he's out to the 42 yard line. So Ned Stearns getting a chance to bring that kickoff back. There's your scoring drive 80 yards, seven plays, lots of Sheehy, and Fortney finishing it off to Dave Janoski. Good job by the Huskies to answer their. Previous two series with a nice drive there, and Rashawn Sheehy, as you as you noted, over the 100-yard mark really got him going. Sarkeesian and the Cougars, their own 42, first and 10. BYU has moved the football here in the second half. They've been unable to really finish the deal. Great job. up from his corner spot. Kyle Roberts made the stop. McKenzie with a carry. You look at the play here. The off guard pulling around. Can't get there. Good job, Kyle Roberts. Way to step up in there. Second down, 14 yards to go. He made sure on this play that he went low and kept his eyes open and made the tackle. BYU came in number 16 in the nation. A very impressive win over number 12, Texas AM. The first weekend of the season, 41 37. That was in Provo. Sarkeesian to the air for his big tight end, Lewis. It's incomplete. He's lucky on that one. I tell you, back in the ball game, Mel Miller, Rich, not, he didn't get a hand on that. Mel Miller had the pick. Nigel Burton on the coverage along with Miller. It's good to see Miller back in the football game. His first series since that collision with Tony Parrish. Good to see him back. 
Although Hollowell filled in quite well there at the corner while he was out. Another long third down play for BYU. Third and 14. In trouble. Down he goes. John Fiala. Look at the play Fiala right off the rear end of Mac Tuiaea coming bouncing free Chorak. Fiala, they're all there. Excellent job to apply pressure, bringing it back. Third sack for Washington. Big kick. Payton back at the 12. Jerome pops pretty good as he heads out of bounds. Jason Straw made the hit. And Washington will get the football now. First and 10. At their own 23 yard line. 80 yards the last time they touched it. And I thought, Sonny, the, the big key on the last drive was reestablishing the ground game. Oh, absolutely. I believe that uh, Rashawn Sheehy did a lot of it on his own, not having a lot of holes there, but that's a, the luxury you have of having a running back that can see that and see the daylight and get to it. The, the key is seeing it, and the other key is being able to get there. Corey Dillon in the backfield now as Washington has it first and ten. Seven seconds left in this third quarter. Dillon a strong runner who had a nice debut against Arizona State over left tackle. Dennis Simmons made the stop three quarters in the books. Washington on top of number 16 BYU 27-10. 27-10, Washington on top of BYU as we start the fourth quarter. Rich Watts and Sonny Sixkiller back at Husky Stadium. It started out cold, wet, and gray. The sun came out, and we've seen lots of offense. Interestingly enough, Washington at 354 yards, BYU at, at 211. You can subtract an awful lot of that yardage with penalties. BYU is almost at 100 yards. Washington is right <laughs> around 80 right now. Yeah, that's it. In all honesty, kept this game from being a real shootout. Instead of 27 to 10, we could be up to 40 to 25 or in that neighborhood. Well, Shane Fortney in the Washington offense. Jim Lambright saw them go 80 yards the last time they had the football. They had to make the offensive coaches real happy. Now, obviously, moving the football and eating clock is tops on the list. This is Dylan, Corey Dylan, inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. The junior out of Franklin High School, right here in Seattle. Very excited to make his first appearance as a Husky in his hometown. The kid worked real hard to become a Husky. And we're at UW are real glad that he's here because it runs like this. Getting a little help downfield with Gerald Harris, but uh, Lane Hale had all he could to bring him down. Dylan again. This time he stumbles forward for a gain of maybe five. Huskies will take that on first down. Last week, seven carries, 36 yards, and a TD. It must have hurt you. Rashawn Sheehy over 100 yards. I guess we're going to give Corey Dillon a little opportunity to gain 100 yards. Second and five, Dylan falls forward. He's close, about a yard short. I 
love seeing the receivers downfield making blocks. Dave Janoski that time down there battling with the DBs. Not only catching the football today, but also a big part of the offense downfield blocks. Ball inside the BYU 29. Janoski with that 28 yard touchdown catch. Finished the last drive. First down. Again, Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon, the ball carrier. Gain of four. There's a penalty flag down. Holding against Washington. Boy, it's hard to see how you can hold on a straight ahead uh, running play. Preliminary player. indication of holding against the Huskies. Well, they accomplished it. Yes, they did. Well, you can see Bob Sapp had that left arm up and wrapped. I don't know if that was the reason for the flag. Emily moves the ball to BYU 36 yard line. It'll back it up and obviously make a third down and short into a third down and nine. Washington playing without Tony Coates and Johnson getting that start at left tackle. No flags, little screen to Sheehy. And he's short of the first down. Now Washington with a decision to make. Now at the 32 yard line, it would be fourth down at about five or about a 49 to 50 yard field goal. And I think the Huskies are going to go for it. There's a look at Bob Sapp, the big senior. Good chance to uh, see if St. Shane Fortney will run that little option play again. Play clock is down to five. Read in motion. Fourth and four. Blitz coming. Courtney going to go for it all. Incomplete. Looking for Mike Reed. There was contact. Step for step with Reed, however, was Ben Cook. Well, I don't quite understand this one. Mike Reed being tousled with all the way down the field. Stepped out of bounds wouldn't have been good anyway. If yeah, he got it. yeah. I don't even think he could have touched that football. It was a good six or seven yards out of bounds. We'll take a timeout. Washington on top in the fourth, 27-10. 27-10. As we head into this fourth quarter, 11:50 left in it. Steve Sarkeesian and the BYU Cougars. Mealy with the catch across the 40, and Itulu Mealy, the big tight end. He's out of bounds at the 43 yard line. That pass play has been there pretty much all day Rich but one thing about the Husky defenders they still have not given up the big bomb to BYU. Six catches now for Mealy. Eight catches for the BYU tight ends. First and ten Cougars, Sarkeesian. This one to Kale Louie. Kale Louie with a move to the outside, and he's got a first down, a gain of about 17 or 18 yards. K.O. Kale Louie. Nigel Burton made the stop. Look at the top of the screen. You'll see a nice little clear play. Back coming underneath the receiver in the uh, slot position. Husky defenders get a little turned around there. Jermaine Smith not knowing exactly where he is, but coming back to help on the on the tackle. Flag down, Sarkeesian down. Josh Smith, the sophomore out of Bellingham, holding Brigham Young. Eric Bateman 73 for BYU has had a tough day trying to block Jason Chorak. You'll see it on the bottom of the screen here. 
You'll get a good look at it. Jason right there, basically just a tackle. Decision, take the penalty. Well, one thing you do by taking the penalty is push BYU further back out of field goal range. Passing yards, the Cougars have been able to get it going. Most of that yardage in the third quarter. This season, BYU has held their opponents to just three points in the fourth. That obviously the big comeback against Texas A&M and the blowout over Arkansas State. Sarkeesian with time. Mealy got it. Oh boy. Tula Mealy with a circus catch. And he's down to the 29 yard line. Great catch right there. Mealy with a tremendous grab. The safeties for Washington have to remember that that middle zone, the tight ends for BYU will split the seam. That time, good throw by Sarkeesian. Not enough for the first down. Second down and one. Sarkeesian, quick toss. Chad Lewis, the other tight end. Close to the first down. I think he has it with forward progress. John Fiala made the stop. You can see Mealy in the slot position right here, Rich, going down. Kyle Roberts releases him. Looks like Nigel Burton should be back there in coverage. Just didn't make the adjustment quick enough to come up and make the play. First, down, First and ten. Chorak. Sarkeesian stays on his feet. Heads to the sideline. Safe passage. And then hits the deck on the track. Boy, how did he stay up? Because Chorak got a good piece of his back leg. Chorak's been around him all day, and again, Jason has just come up a little short and making a big play. Sarkeesian right here, look at the top of the screen. Chorak driving in there. Really, his body, I'm wow. surprised Sarkeesian's not hurt more than he is. Good coverage downfield, though, Rich. Nobody was open to get rid of the ball. Sometimes on a broken play, a guy will forget coverage. And an offen offensive receiver will come open. Second and seven. From the Washington 24. Sarkeesian can't get away this time. Tuiaea. Big Mac. Fourth sack of the day for the Huskies. With a sack. Watson seven. They have turned it up a notch here, Rich. Not going to let him get away this time. Big Mac with those big, strong arms. Give credit, though, to the defensive secondary because that was almost a coverage sack. Sarkeesian looked at the initial pattern and then held it and then went down. Third down, 13. Trouble again. Richie. Down he goes. He kiked him away, finishes him off. Penalty flag goes down. It might be a face match. I don't know if they had a, a hold of it or if it's a hold on the offensive line. Let's look. Could be a spear by Chris Campbell or Kaika Malloy. Face matched. Yep. Good call. Sarkeesian. A very durable soul. He has been today. He has been. <laughs> But gee, what do you know? Another hanky. Face mask, five yards from the previous spot. Third down. A five yard. So it's not a 15 yarder. Here's another look. David Ritchie blowing through in there, grabbing anything he can. And I believe that he's just was one of those deals where he over the shoulder pads, it was just a light touch. Thus the five yard penalty. So it's third down and eight instead of third down and 13. Sarkeesian again in trouble. Down he goes. 
Tui Aea. Mack got him again. Second sack for Tui Aea. Fifth sack for Washington. And now BYU has a decision to make. Boy, it's hard for me to believe with a big experienced line of BYU that the Huskies are able to get Fourth pressure down. like they have. And Big Mac right there doing an excellent job up the middle. Again, Sonny, he had time to throw the football. And boy, three weeks ago, everybody's going, oh, those little inexperienced DBs, I guess they're doing a job. Fourth down 11. Crowd comes to their feet. Sarkeesian flag goes down and they'll blow the play dead play clock might have expired. It did. Sarkeesian has been frustrated much of the day with his sideline. Asking for the plays to get in. And at times they've been late in getting there. It's probably frustrated more by not having another offensive lineman to block. It's one of the things that'll happen, Rich, is you have two tight ends and they're out in the pattern. That means you only have five core linemen to block for you. Sarkeesian got a man at the four yard line. It's Mealy. The Tula Mealy with a catch and a gutty fourth down completion by BYU. And they're down inside the Washington five yard line. Same thing from the right side of the screen. It looked like number eight, Nigel Burton, a little indecisive about who to hang with, are not getting there in time. The big seam route by the tight ends have been there all day. You know, you would think with these tight ends catching as many balls as they do that you would look at them first before you would look at their wideouts. Mealy has eight catches. Lewis in motion. Sarkeesian, Johnson down to the two. Dustin Johnson. John Fiala made the initial stop along with Dean Caliaga. Good surge. Oh, they took care of Jason Chorak. Little double team action right there at the point of attack. Good job by Fiala to fill the hole. Didn't get it. Ink Aliega, great hit. Ronnie Jenkins. Power football up the middle. Ink just creasing the seam right there. Nobody putting a hand on him. Somebody must have broke down there. Gee, let's see. Uh, play action pass to the tight end. What do you think? Six and a half minutes left. 27 10. Washington on top. Johnson. And a Tuiaya in the backfield. Lewis in motion. Sarkeesian, little bootleg, looking for the tight end. Throws it. Caught! Tumbling catch. Touchdown, BYU. Itula Mealy. Man, is this guy something, Sonny? It's unbelievable catch. Again. This guy has been catching the ball all day. I'd be right in his hip pocket no matter where he went. Good job by Sarkeesian. Good play action. Way to roll out. Way to find the open man because I believe he was not the main receiver. Play oh out. man. And this is not a nimble wide receiver making these catches, folks. This is a six foot four, 240 pound tight end. Itula Mealy with a great catch and BYU down the field they go they stick it in the end zone and they make the extra point. It's a 10 point lead with six minutes left. 27 17 Washington on top of BYU don't go anywhere yet six minutes left in this football game time to take a look at Husky history brought to you by Q point home mortgage loans whether you're buying or refinancing a home Q point is the intelligent choice. The last time these two teams met 
at Husky Stadium. Ten quarterback sacks. Reggie Rogers and the Huskies had a big day. Four touchdown passes from Chris Chandler. And Washington had a very impressive win over BYU. 52-21 was the final. Jim Lambright, an assistant coach on that Husky team. 11 plays, 68 yards. Nine catches now for Mealy. What is he, over 100 yards now, Sonny? Yeah, he is up to 108. Corey Dillon now at the seven. And Dillon goes down. Boy, an acrobatic tackle by Greg White on the special teams. He came flying up that right side. And now Washington has to move the football or else they'll give it back to BYU. And remember what we've been saying all day about Brigham Young and the second half and the fourth quarter. They are notoriously a strong finishing football team. And they have shown it here today. Drawing within 10 with six minutes left. Can Brigham Young stop the Huskies on the ground? Little swing pass, Corey Dillon, lots of room. Dillon outside, and he's out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Omar Morgan made the stop. Good reaction, Shane Fortney, that time. Seeing the man blitzing on him right in his face. And those are rich. People don't realize how tough it is to throw the ball straight out to your right side. Right here, it's very tough to, to find the range on that. Corey Dillon, a good receiver. The only thing that he could have done better on this play was to stay in bounds. First down, 10 yards to go for the Huskies. First and 10. Some breathing room now at the 38 yard line. Sheehy out to the 41. Olin Krutz, the big sophomore out of Honolulu. Good young offensive line for the Huskies. Second down, seven yards to go for the Huskies. At the Husky 41. There's a look at Krutz. Both of these teams have a pretty good Hawaiian flavor. Yes, they do. Very competitive ball over there. I can see why. Fortney a quick toss. Oh. Dylan again. And he crashes down to the 47. He's short of the first down. It does keep the clock rolling. And it will be third down and short now for Washington. Again, hitting the hot receiver. People are coming and getting in his face a little bit. BYU has most of the day done some very good stunning up front with their defensive linemen and having a backer scrape on in there. But uh, they do run the stunts, and it does confuse the offensive line at times. Third down short. Cam Kissel in motion. Dillon to the 42. Move the chains. And then restart the clock. Four and a half minutes left. Big first down there with a little over four minutes to play. Corey Dillon with a power run. This is what it is. Coaches love to do this. You got a lead. Get a drive going. Let your big back gain some yardage. <laughs> Not easy to bring down. Brock Heward, I think, banged up. We haven't received anything official. But I'll tell you what, Shane Fortney has played very well. 16 of 24, 172 yards. Flag goes down. Dylan goes down. Henry Bloomfield and Harlan IU made the stop. Eight of a yard before the penalty. You know, Brock could have tweaked his back when he got sacked when he came in earlier in the ballgame. BYU is offside, which was a reoccurring theme in the first half. <laughs> Here's a good look at it right there. Changing that cadence up. And last week Shane did the same thing and the key of course was not to 
move your head, do the old head bob when you try and draw him off. And uh, two weeks in a row now, he's been able to get the defensive line jumping. He just looks confident right now in there in the pocket. You know, calling the plays. He looks like he knows what he wants to do and is doing. He has not thrown that many bad balls, as you would call them. Dylan off the right side, very close to busting it. First down, Washington to the 29 yard line. Omar Morgan, the last thing between Corey Dillon and a long touchdown run. Corey Dillon should come back and go up to number 36, Mike Reed. Pat him on the head. Look on the left side of the screen, 36, leading him up through the hole right there, taking on the defender. This is the way you draw him up. BYU has two timeouts left. Washington with three. Time to think about those things. 3.15 left in the football game. Washington continues to move it. First and ten. Cam Kissel in motion. Dillon off the right side. Another seven yards. Ellison made the stop. You just get the feeling, Sonny, that he's this close to breaking it. He glides along that line of scrimmage so well. It looks like he can take it deep. What a difference between he and Rashawn Sheehy. Rashawn's got that tremendous speed, and it's not there. He'll bolt it outside. Right here, Corey Dillon just kind of working his way along the line, staying with his blockers, and actually he's getting ready for that big burst like you mentioned. 79 yards and 34 in receiving. Dillon again, good penetration. And he's hit by Spencer Reed. Clock continues to roll. Close to two minutes left. Great leg drive by Corey Dillon. This is where the sense of pride comes in for the offensive lineman. Hey, guys, we got six over six minutes to go. Let's jam it down their throats, get some first downs, and get out of here. Looks like they've met the challenge so far. Little play action, Fortney in trouble, down he goes. Brad Martin on a blitz. That call really surprises me with a third and one trying to run off the clock the way they've been running the football. BYU calls a timeout. Fortney slow to get up. You know, the other thing it may do is it may take Washington out of field goal range. That was a big loss. It was a crazy call. They'll mark the football at the 34 yard line. It would be about a 51 yard field goal. And so Washington is going to punt. Let's see if he can punt this ball about. 300 yards up in the air and have it land on about the four out of bounds. Yeah. Well. Timeout on the field. And so BYU is going to discuss this. Crazy call, Rich. Crazy call. Third and one, ramming the ball down their throat. Surprising. 27-17, Washington on top of BYU. Let's see if the Cougars come after it. Ahmed Sarshar back in front for Ahmed Sarshar will punt. Ben Cahoon is deep along with James Dye. You would think that a minute and a half and 10 points is a little too much of a bite to take. But remember, BYU 
has done some miraculous stuff in their days. Sarshar. Perfect. Nicely done on the special teams. Brendan Jones. Kicking down on the one yard line by Brendan Jones. You couldn't pass this ball any better. Well, I, this, this is a great kick. We'll take a timeout. BYU will have the football when we get back. Twenty seven seventeen Washington on top of BYU minute and a half left. Next time you'll see the Huskies next weekend Arizona and Washington next Sunday eight o'clock. Arizona. That young freshman quarterback should be an interesting football game. It's next weekend. Same time. Same place. Probably won't see quite as much offense out of Arizona as you see out of BYU. No that but you we'll might see see, you might see a little more defense though. Yep. Here's your quarterback comparison now Shane Fortney very efficient. Sarkeesian explosive at times. Sarkeesian has had to do a lot more running around than Mr. Fortney however. Washington has been able to put a lot of pressure on the Brigham Young passing attack mainly because BYU has been unable to run the football. Ninety nine yards of real estate to go. BYU down ten. Sarkeesian sack. sack safety Jason Chorak. Jerry Jensen there as well. Sarkeesian did not want to unload and get a grounding call that would have been a safety as well coaches are saying just throw the ball away yeah you see Chorak and then Jensen over the top Jason's been around them all day Rich it's just fitting that he's in there to get the safety it looked like Sarkeesian did want to just throw it long and out of bounds coaches are wondering why he didn't do it as well Unofficially, I think that's six sacks now on the Washington defense. 29 17. I don't think we'll see Shane Fortney when they get the ball. After the safety. BYU will kick behind that. And you can you can make this an onside kick, Sonny. Yes, you can. Although it looks like BYU will punt it. I've never really seen an onside punt, but I guess you could have one in this situation. The Cougars will elect to kick the ball. Dylan trying to run it down, wrap that thing up, Mr. Dylan. And he does. He goes down on one knee at the 17 yard line with a minute 16 left. Steve Sarkeesian has had a long afternoon. Before 1996 is over, Sonny, I think this guy is going to put up some incredible numbers. Well, you can see the way they spread the offense out. He doesn't throw a lot of balls beyond 10 yards. Most of them are between four and eight yards and let the receivers run. Consequently, you're going to have a high percentage. Brock Heward in at quarterback. I'm not sure that Shane Fortney is 100% at this point. He went down after that sack. Now he's on the bench. It looked like he may have uh, landed on his knee on the he turf and the ball carrier. took a pounding on it. Heward, who looked like he might have been banged up in the first half, had one series which ended with an interception in the end zone. And BYU will burn its final timeout with a minute left. Doesn't look like he's walking too well right no. there, but he's not going to be backing up throwing the ball. We'll take a timeout. Final minute of this ball game coming up next. 29-17 Washington over BYU. Brock Heward will hand it off. Mike Reed and the rest of the Huskies will try to run some clock. BYU cannot stop. 
the clock. Jason Harris actually the ball carrier. And so Washington will look towards next week and Arizona BYU. By the way. As New Mexico at home next week they're into their whack schedule which includes interestingly enough SMU UNLV Tulsa TCU Rice. It's a real different flavor in the whack in 1996. Fewer to one knee and that'll do it. This football game is history. Washington has defeated the number 16 team in the nation. BYU goes down 29 17. Jim Lambright and the Huskies one and one on the 96 season. BYU will fall to two and one. Whether they fall out of the top 25, don't know. They may end up around 20. 22 or 23. 29 17, your final score.